guys welcome back to the channel thanks for tuning in this is drake on digital and welcome to the channel today we're going to have a interview with synth synth is the founder over at skycoin he has a very in innovative mind and has a different way of thinking um, but he has definitely brought a lot of value to the crypto space in this interview we are going to talk about his idea on the project where it is going forward and a bit about how he sees the crypto sphere today without further ado we're going to continue with the video and have the interview with synth it is about two hours long so be prepared for that if you guys are new to drake on digital we talk about different cryptocurrencies different altcoin projects and how to make it in the game here's a quick tip when you're watching this video you can go on YouTube, there's a little gear setting. You can change the playback speed and go to 2x, 1.75 or 1.5x. It'll play the video in a faster speed. So you can have the twice the content in half the time. Again, guys, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and have the interview with Synth. Thank you. All right, let's do it. All right, Synth, tell me about yourself, man. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? All right, well, just so um, basically, I was, right just, um, I was just, I was just got the freaking ducks in the office. <laughs> the fuck? Um, yeah, so I, I was just really, I was doing like hedge fund stuff and I got pulled in basically to audit Bitcoin for some like dark pool company and they wanted to know if it was a scam. All these people were asking if it was a scam. So I got like sucked into you know, crypto. And I was in the, like the early groups, like the cypher pongs. And I, you know, and I, I played around with like the hash cash and the, you know, the, the really early pre Bitcoin stuff. So I've, I've been around for a while. Um, you know, I, I was, uh, I did a bunch of like C development and things. So I just, you know, jumped right in there and I did like some crypto audits and, uh, I think I was the one that discovered duplicate Coinbase outputs in Bitcoin and I told them and they didn't give a shit and they said that it was not a problem and then then it was a problem and you know blah 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 blah. So I, I've been there since the you know the very early days in Bitcoin and then I ended up getting sucked into Skycoin as basically a project manager and Skycoin was an amalgamation of a bunch of crypto projects that came after Bitcoin to basically fix the problems in, in Bitcoin. So we, we, we say Bitcoin's successful today because it's $60,000, but you know, the, the price really in these markets is about people get, you know, it's, it has nothing to do with the technical fundamentals. So Bitcoin has a consensus algorithm proof of work. And at the beginning, that it was a social experiment, and everyone was expecting it to fail, like Hashgraph failed, but for some reason, or uh, Hashcash failed, but for some reason, Bitcoin took off, and you know, and proof of work is still working, and the governments haven't been able to, you know, shut it down, and um, and it uses a lot of electricity, but it 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 seems to work, and where it doesn't work, maybe like you have three mining pools in China, and they control most of the hashing power. And if someone puts in a bullshit block or attacks the network, they're connected to each other over a private VPN that's not connected to the main internet. It's like a right. virtual LAN, like their own little VLAN. And if one of these blocks comes in, that's a, someone attacking the network, they actually just don't, they don't obey the Bitcoin protocol. They throw the block out. <laughs> so really? the Bitcoin protocol <laughs> isn't um, perfect. It doesn't actually even work, but um, because of these social relations that develop the way that they, um, the way that the network actually works in practice, um, th these double spend attacks really haven't happened. And when they have been attempted, the miners actually just throw the blocks out. So, so the, so proof of, you know, so I was there at the beginning and, and, and we noticed too, that, uh, you know, that this proof of work was going to have this consolidation of uh, power in, in the hands of a few people. And at one point gigahash.io was Ukrainian and uh, I think it was like Star Fury, GigaHash.io. They had a over fifty percent of the network hashing power, maybe seventy percent. They were hiding their hashing power in other mining pools. Yeah. So one company was running like sixty or seventy percent of the Bitcoin hashing, and that's not what Satoshi intended. He he intended that we have two hundred thousand people, and that the network was distributed globally over everyone's computers, and this never happened. So it really centralized very quickly. And so so Bitcoin, 
um, it seems to have, I was there from the beginning when people, you know, was libertarians and Ron Paul people and they would like screw the Fed and it was all end the Fed, Ron Paul people. And then we had the Lambo people and the, you know, every generation of the Bitcoin people, like get rich quick, buy people, you know, I, we were, re- I was shocked when I saw people buying Bitcoin to make money because at the beginning it was about ideology and ending the Fed and, you know, getting rid of government shouldn't be printing up money and, you know, manipulating the economy and this and that. And so, and then later on, once the price started going up, all the people coming in were just doing it to make money. So we, we had a shift in Bitcoin from the ideologues and from being an ideological thing to being something like people want to get rich quick. So, so anyway, Skycoin was this project with a bunch of coins. There's like three, four different coins that were merged in. This was like uh, almost 10 years ago. Uh, this was uh, even before Litecoin launched and Litecoin was the first fork of Bitcoin. And um, we were already rewriting Bitcoin and rewriting the consensus and rewriting um, um, and then doing some other projects that we wanted to do. So like in Skycoin, um, we we developed a new consensus algorithm to get rid of proof of work and proof of stake. And um, a quick question on that, um, the obelisk, uh, that that's the mechanism you use, correct? Well, right now it's actually using masternode because it, it, it works really well. It's the transactions are less than two seconds. The node is stable, but we're going to switch to Obelisk. I don't want to give a time frame because I, every time I give a time frame, it's always wrong. But, but basically, we have this thing called CX, which is our programming language. Then we have CX chains. Then we're launching Obelisk on CX chains. But Obelisk is not the only consensus mechanism. If I have an, if I have a company and I'm doing, uh, I can use. Uh, the CX programming language and blockchain as a database, right? Which is part of our platform. I don't have a public network, so I don't need a pub. I can use like Raft or I can use these different consensus algorithms. So we have a pluggable consensus module and, and some things have a, a single master node, node. Some have a pool of master nodes with leadership elections. Some um, have a, this, the obelisk web of trust model to elect the master nodes and and so you do you use this to vote on who's going to produce the blocks and if they cause a problem get rid of them um and then there's like closed networks we have like raft and and things like that where the company is going to nominate a server and that's going to be the the master server and if that fails then you have a process for changing the master server so that so we have we so this obelisk the the problem with it we implemented it we did this task we whatever but these exchanges since it's a new consensus algorithm they really gave us a lot of shit because they don't want to get hit by a double spending attack so if we do this and then there's a bug and they get hit with a double spend then we get delisted so we have to be do a lot of like six eight months of testing and and you know anyway so i that's something i wanted to but that's going to be deployed primarily right now for the enterprise uh first for the enterprise and for like blockchain video games on our cx platform then we're migrating the skycoin skycoin 2 we on skycoin 1.0 we're migrating skycoin 2.0 to our new uh cx chain system okay. so so we've had the system that's been running now for i think like eight it's almost like eight years now and it works pretty well and the server runs for a month or like eight months, 10 months, two years before crashing. So it's pretty, very, very, very stable. But we're, once this new system is done, we're migrating all the coins to the, to the CX chain system. And is that's that a system be designed. automatic or um, is that something that well, you have to transfer it over? Like yeah, these- we have to do, we have, it's a whole re-architecture of the, the network, the block synchronization, block storage, um, uh, it, it's it's almost it's almost I wouldn't say a complete rewrite, but um, you know all the networking, block storage, transaction. So the CX, um, so Skycoin is one blockchain, but um, the CX chain is going to have two hundred thousand blockchains or a million blockchains. If you're a company, you might have every employee in your company have their own blockchain for like, for instance, for shared folders for like file storage, or if you have a Twitter account, it's its own blockchain. You have a blog, it's its own blockchain. You have a video. Uh, sharing thing it's its own blockchain so this is really about using blockchains as databases it's not using blockchain as money so this is about the new decentralized internet and how we're going to store the data so, so like cosmos how they have their own interoperable blockchains like their own hubs or well 
the blockchains aren't inter, in, in this case so they're not interoperable so like this okay. blockchain is your twitter this blockchain is his twitter this okay. blockchain is your uh video share your video channel where you're in uh, and um your video channel could just be a json file it could say here's the video here's the date it was published here's the hash of the video and some metadata for where do i get the video here's the thumbnail for the video right and and your channel is just this json list uh you know really simple but we need to store that data somewhere where it's decentralized and where anyone can get it and you don't want to run this server on your computer because you know you want to have a copy of this multiple places on the internet so the idea is you create your blockchain and you're the only one that can write to the blockchain so you own it you can write data to it no one else can write data but everyone else can read your blockchain and have a full copy so if someone wants to, to update um, you know read your tweets as all of your friends will also have a copy of your uh, of your tweets. Um, so when someone is trying to recover the tweets or access them, they don't have to go to your computer to do it. They can go to any of the copies, any of your friends or any of your subscribers or any you know data. You can hire a da third party data service to just run some nodes to keep copies of your data to make sure it's accessible. And so if I'm in China and I um, I will get the data from China. I won't go all the way around the world to San Francisco and grab the data. I won't go over the ocean, over 15, you know, submarine cables. If there's a copy of the data in the city I live in, it will get the data there first. And if it can't get a copy of the data there, it'll get a copy within your country. And if it can't do it there, it'll get a copy in, from the continent. And then if it can't get it there, then it'll go around the world. So this is about relocalizing the data so that people, you have control of your data, control of your photos, your video, your blog, your, your, so this is to replace Twitter, Facebook, Google, Instagram, uh, Telegram, um, uh, Slack, Dropbox, uh, Baidu Cloud. Um, this is the, this, this, this infrastructure that we're building is to replace the whole internet as it exists okay. right now. So that's almost done. I, and and so, oh, oh, so we, we just did this huge product release, I think yesterday, which I think I'm supposed to talk about. So we released the Skycoin VPN and this has been running for six months and it works pretty well. And it runs on top of our networking protocol called Skywire, right? And um, so we have a VPN and it runs over this new network called Skywire. Skywire is sort of like Tor. We have our own network namespace that is an IP4 or IP6, each server has a public key and we're able to connect to the server by the public key. So we wrote a little VPN app over, over Skywire to, you know, and this has been in use for a while now. Actually, there's a company in Vietnam and they have, you know, a couple hundred people and they have some problem with their internet in Vietnam. So they're actually relaying their whole business through this VPN for a couple hundred people for over for a few years now actually so we developed this um you know um vlan uh vpn um software defined network sdn so all of your servers have a public key and you can connect to the server by the public key so it's sort of like cj dns or like tor um and we have a thing like multi-homing so you can have multiple connections um, that go over different routes. So if I have like five cable modems in my office, each cable modem has a different IP address normally. So my traffic can only go over one cable modem or the other cable modem. With Skywire, I can plug in these cable modems and I can actually send traffic over all five paths at the same time. So, so if I have five this, cable modems. How would this VPN work though? Like are these, all the people already have their own satellites? Because I, I hear that it, it's, not live yet so it's not fully functioning so like they're oh, still no, no. working it's on been, deploying it's been running for two over two years now okay but okay it, it, that was it, we had a test net and then we had a main net and then we had a uh the vpn was released after the main net after the main net was launched it took eight months to fix all the bugs that we, we didn't know were there until we launched it okay <laughs> and then the vpn has been in use for a year two years but it wasn't easy to install it didn't have a windows installer OS X installer it only worked on linux so this release on friday was we released uh the version that you can just double click some icon on windows and install it and run it so this is the consumer vpn this right. wasn't like you need like a linux developer spending four hours to set it up for a company you know so um 
And th this is, uh, we also developed hardware. So this is a SkyMiner. So this has eight, this has eight uh, computers in it. And each of these yeah, computers- Yeah, they, they sell them for like two grand on your website. Is that yeah. the, is, the one? Yeah, th I think they're sold out now. I don't know if we're up upgrading them. So, but th there's like, um, I don't know, like four, I forget what it is. I should remember this, but like four or eight processors, it's a cell phone chip. So this is actually eight computers. And basically, the idea is um, if each of the computers can handle up to 50 megabits per second of encrypted VPN traffic. So if I have uh, maybe uh, 20 of them, I can do one gigabit per second. And if I have 200, I can do 10 gigabit. So this is like if I have a company, I have 800 employees at this office and I have 200 employees at this office and whatever, and I want all my offices to be on one VLAN, one internal network. Um, I could do that now. I can have full speed and, you know, um, so, and, and, and so anyway, so we, we spent a lot of time, so we have this platform. So we did the networking protocol, Skywire. We did the programming language, CX, which is our, our it's not a smart contracts language. This, you can write, you, you can't write a 3D, like a first person shooter in a smart contracts language. Right. This is a full programming language. You can write first person shooters in it. You can write poker, you can do 3D graphics, you can do video encoding. Any program that you can run on a normal computer with CX, you can now run a blockchain. So this is another, it's like a leap really beyond what a th like Ethereum or these smart contracts are useless. They're like little JavaScript. Um, Why isn't they, they anyone don't do anything. talking about this project? It's crazy. Like I, I was listening to a couple of the interviews that you've already had. I've researched the project and I was like, something's not adding up. It, it's like, what in the world? $50 million market cap. This thing's going places. Man. So we, uh, we had, so we, we had nothing at the beginning. We had like, we were at like a penny, right? The price during I think 2008 to 2017, that, that bubble, that crazy, crazy bubble, yeah. we ran up to $50. I saw that. So we went from one penny to $50 in a couple months. It was, it was crazy. And the, we didn't have any software back then. The consensus wasn't done. Our hardware wasn't done. Our hardware wallet wasn't released. Our, um, programming language wasn't released and our platform wasn't released because that was still that was all in development still it, it was just at the beginning stages at that point and some of these things took two years four years to develop and now we're, we're going um back into this thing where we, we spent two three four years in development and we finished most of the things that we wanted to finish and one of the things we noticed with this market is the technical fundamentals, they don't have anything to do with the price. It's, it just doesn't matter. So the, and, and, and another thing is the, I should shit talk the thing, but basically um, after that bubble, what happened was 98% of the crypto companies shut down. They weren't, they said, we're not making money anymore. They shut down. They, they um, might not have a guy uh, even updating their, like you saw IPFS raise like $2 billion and then they just disappear. They didn't even remove their IPO page. They didn't update their Twitter for like a year. And then later on, some other company comes in and IPFS is now launched. It's on an exchange. What happened was these program uh, projects died and then some guy comes in and I, I can't say specifically about IPFS, but you know, something very similar happened with them. Um, some guy comes in, they buy up these dead crypto projects and then they're running pump and dumps. And so there's like a, you know, blockchain alliance and polychain capital and this group and this group. And they created like 400 groups, right? That look at yeah. an investment group and they launched a new coin and they put this like smorgasbord, like logo, like NASCAR, like this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing. And like, the, I'll look at all of our investors. There's 40 of them. All 40 of those companies are run by the same two guys. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've seen it. Like you go on some blockchains or not blockchain, but uh, blockchain websites, like you'll see new launch, newly launched projects and you'll research the guy who made it and he owns all the other ones. He, he started all of them and it's like, what? Oh yeah, oh, whatever. What, what does that mean? That means nothing. I mean, it, it's just like, what They're the world? They're astroturfing. So uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there that 
Uh oh, I think, oh, I thought it froze. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there that say like, I, I, a lot of people say it was a smear campaign, but a bunch of people are saying, oh yeah, Skycoin was a pump it up, it was a scam, but I'm looking at the GitHub, I'm, I'm looking at the team, you guys are still developing, you guys are still working. So it's kind of like, I, it's like- We're actually number this? one by development activity. There's, there's, a, there's a site, they rank development activity and they only use one of our GitHubs. And we were like number eight out of all of blockchain. And we have 30 GitHubs. They're only looking at one GitHub and we're ranked number eight by, so, so, develop, uh, so if you look actually as an insider and someone who's been in blockchain for 10 years, I, 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 have, I could shit talk what's actually happening in blockchain for 40 hours. I don't even want to get into it because it's just so negative. And, but basically there's two groups. Every single coin is launched by two groups. And there was the, um, remember, remember that um, crypto note team? And they crypto created the note. crypto note. So there's this uh, software called crypto note. Then they use crypto note to launch 60 coins, 70 coins, 80 coins. So really? you think there's 80 coins with 80 teams and they're not, it's all the same software forked and like, a, you know, Litecoin, Dogecoin, that was all forked from Bitcoin. Then there's another group related to polychain capital and they're just launching like 150 coins. So you see 400 coins on this market and they're all owned by like two, two groups basically. And, and then and there's things maybe like a Cosmos, Arc, Sky, there's a couple, maybe eight coins max that are actually doing software development. And all of the coins are using uh, WebAssembly for smart contracts. And they're just copying the code, coin, 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 copying the code. And then, and they, they'll launch 10 coins, two of them, will, uh, eight of them will fail, two of them will get really big, they pump and dump, you know, and, and this market is, um, so, so yeah, we're doing all this, we didn't really do a lot of marketing, we, we're just doing technical development, uh, we're building up our platform, and the goal for Skycoin is to get 10 million users or 100 million users, it's to build the future of the internet, it's not really like uh, to market and get as many people pumping and dumping Skycoin as we, as we can, because it's like, I, right. um, we're building the platform to take over, to build the new internet, the web 3.0, or, you know, you saw parlor, you saw um, what's happening in the United States. Oh no, States. it's They're happened to me before, the Soviet like, Union. just in general, like on market, not, not like parlor, but on mark, like Facebook, they, they say I don't exist. I can't even create a Facebook account. I mean, obviously I don't exist, I'm real. And Facebook just won't let me create one. It's like, what in the world? And then Twitter, I barely even use Twitter. And YouTube, I've seen several YouTube channels. They just shut them down. And it's like, mm -hmm. e even, um, what was the one guy? PewDiePie? He's got- PewDiePie, seven. yeah, yeah. He got shut down. Not dude. only him. Well, not, not now. He's, he's good now. But I'm saying like, he got shut down. It was like- He crazy. got on his knees and he sucked the dick and he, they let him, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. And they let him back. And they let him. <laughs> it, it, it's the YouTube overlords, man. There was a guy, uh, Ivan on tech. He was at Davos. So they go to bring him to Davos in front of the CEOs and the billionaires and Obama and Trump and Putin and the world leaders, you know, and, the, and our, our leaders at Davos running the, running the world, the, the great reset. Right. So they bring this guy to Davos and they give him an award. And then six months later, they have Twitter, face, and they bring them to like the, you know, Google has like a giant Davos Google party yeah. and the, the Facebook party and you go in and, oh, here's the biggest tech blogger and blah, blah, blah. And they like, you know, parade them around like a, it's like a freaking pony show, right? <laughs> and, uh, and then six months later, after being paraded in front of all like the Google executives, he gets nuked off the internet and they censored his channel and he said, fuck these people. And he created his own like own media platform to get off YouTube. Because he's he can't talk about crypto on YouTube without getting uh, deplatformed. I, I know he. I, I don't know if his uh, channel went down, but he he did finally get it back up. Ivan still produces some, but he stopped producing as much as he used to. Though probably probably got a little notification, but we'll see what happens. I, it, it's so it's crazy how this world runs, man. I know people that. They like, uh, I met like a lot of contacts, you know, financial and things like that. And you just, you talk to people on, and you get information that you don't get from the media that you're not going to hear. 
about problem, like, you know, what problems, like, you know, a Chinese factory owner has exporting to Argentina where they have capital controls and he can't, he can sell in Argentina, but he can't get his money out and he has to send it to, you know, this country to buy plastic so he can, um, you know, he makes cell phone cases, right? So he right. buys plastic in Germany, sends it to China, makes a cell phone case, sends to Argentina, but then Argentina, he makes money and then he can't move it into back to Germany to buy more plastic. So he has, he's making a bunch of profit, but it's stuck in Argentina and he can't get out of, you know, so you have these real world problems that people have that, you know, or, or, you know, world leaders on um, exposed person list and all these like weird banking rules that normal people don't have to, to deal with. So I just talk to people. I go to these events, I talk to them and what I'm basically the, uh, there are people who fled the Soviet union they fled Hungary, they fled Poland, they fled, they fled the USSR to come to America for freedom. And now they're applying for their passport back to Poland to move the family. I don't back blame them, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's garbage. Like, like it, if you walk out the door without, without five masks on, they're like, <laughs> it's like, what in the world? It, it's, it's crazy, man. Um, I, I, put a diaper I don't even on your know face. what to say. Huh? They just put a diaper on your face. And... Oh, dude. Yeah, there were some people wearing thongs. I was like, okay. <laughs> but I got, I got to ask you so, about... Uh... So the internet right now, people, there's not going to be a global internet. There's going to be a European Union internet, a Russian internet, a Chinese internet, a US internet, and a Brazilian internet. There's In, in 10 years, there's not going to be a global international internet because all these com all these countries i've seen them their na their national security programs the government programs the data storage retention laws that they've been paying i've talked to people that deal that have to sit in these freaking committees and they are not they don't have any intent like the european union they say why do we let foreign companies op or like access our citizens without paying us money? They don't have a lot. They, they should have to file licenses. So you have to like, if you want to have a, a website in China, you have to go to the government and get a license. Yeah. Okay. And not everyone can have a website. You have to, what is your website for? What is it doing? Where is it? What's your company? Who, who are you? You know, in the European union, they might say that, you know, you have to apply for a license. And if you're storing data for people in the EU, you have to prove that that data is inside of the EU and not being stored overseas. They have the international data retention laws. So in t we're going to have the internet balkanized and protect into all these little tiny internets that are not connected. Russia is prepared to turn off the whole foreign internet. They have a firewall. They can turn off the internet. They have their own DNS thing. They have all the ISPs on board. China, oh, yeah, Amazon Web for Services, like two weeks ago, shut down. So basically, the whole internet was shut down for like an hour. Did you hear about that? No, I was Yeah, that. Amazon but, um, Web Services, they were having an issue with hosting and everyone's website was just down. So basically 80% of the internet wasn't even working. So, so these countries, they're building firewalls like China has, right? And so we're going to have a balkanized internet, but pretend I'm a company, right? And I have an office in China and I have an office in Japan and I have an office in the US. How do I send my data, get my, like I have, you know, employees have shared folders. They do some work, they put it in the share folder and then other employees in another office have to get that data. And I have my office, you know, employees in Chinese, if I do cloud, but Google Drive is blocked and the office and the employees in the US are using uh, Google Drive, but it's blocked in China. You know, it's just, and then I have one for Brazil and one for France. And this is, this is just bullshit. So that, that's why we built all these networking tools and this new networking layer on top of the existing internet because this balkanization problem you know i was you know operating in china i was dealing with this a couple of years ago and a lot of these tools we built just because um so 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 anyway we do have this blockchain stuff over there and it's pretty cool and then there's there's some stuff that we're doing like uh social media right like for the in public but we're not going to make any money on that we're going to give them like tweets and twitters and video feeds and maybe even video streaming eventually but we're not going to make any money on that. It's a free service, right? And over here we have companies and these comp it's like data storage, networking, VLAN. I, I don't even like talking about this because it's so boring, but that's actually where all the money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, the, it, it, it's know. true. It's so true. Like, so, you know, so when you have that set up though, so is it like the Skycoin, Skycoin holders, are they just getting like coin hours or how is it oh. going to be like, 
decentralized. So you, you refer to it as a company. Is that referring to all the holders or just you as a company? And you kind of toss those down. Trying to so we have a nonprofit, it. nonprofit foundation that does the software development. Then we have to have some company set up, like in China, to produce hardware and hardware wallets and sell them and do import export certificates. So, so you know the and then um, if you're selling to businesses, they need support contracts, right? Like they're internet's down they need someone to call within five minutes 24 7 right. to, to hit the butt reset button on their network because of what's going on and you know and sometimes it's really stupid like oh you unplugged your router plug the power back in your router <laughs> <laughs> right? Dude, no you know, like, I, I know oh. it happens all the time because I, i've done this before like I, this was like a year ago or two years ago i sent coins to an exchange and I was going all nuts. I was like, my coins aren't here. My coins aren't here. I paid the transaction fee. I go back to look at the transaction. I sent zero dollars. So I'm all flipping out on this exchange. I didn't send anything. So it's like, <laughs> it, 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 most of the time, is, well, every time it's just the user. Every time. Yeah. So, so we wouldn't, eat, so that stuff, I don't want to roll that in the sky coin dealing with like, you know, customer tech support for like, you know, for hotel, for hotel using our network accelerator and the, right. you know, internet's down. Why is your blah, 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 blah. Right. So, uh, so, so, oh, so basically what we, what we're doing for, for our model is, I don't know. I, I really don't know what we're doing because uh, this consumer thing is going to be really cool. We're going to get a lot of users like with the VPN, the video share, because the, the U S is turning into the, um, Soviet Union. They're, they're like the new, they're becoming the new Soviet Union in terms of the censorship. And it's like the government will tell you like how many genders there are. Like there's 43 genders today and tomorrow there's 46 genders. And if you don't believe the number that we give you of the number of genders, you're going to prison. We're going to fine you. We're going to shut you down. So th this is like Soviet style brainwashing. So the people who escaped the Soviet Union, they had to deal with this every day of their life. So they know this shit. They've seen that they lived lived in the Soviet Union. But the Americans, they're new to this. They just think, ah, oh, it's just, just being liberal. You know, they don't they don't think it's like a, you know, mind control. So so we're in this world where we have extreme censorship. You're gonna get fired from your job based upon your political opinions. You they're gonna the government's gonna mandate you have an ID. If you go to Facebook, they say put in your ID. You put in the wrong tweet, you said something offensive. Facebook is mandated by law to ask you for your ID. So they know who you are or your phone number or your SMS so they can identify you. And they're, they're having a law passed this year or next year. I've been told that they're doing suspicious activity reports, meaning they may even do this and not have to, they do it secretly and not pass a law, but you know, you have a bank account and you send more than $10,000. It's like, oh, it's suspicious. The bank has to fill out the suspicious activity report going to some government agency. Yep. And then they look at you to see if you're a drug dealer because, oh, you spent more than $10,000. You must be a drug dealer. Are you a drug dealer? Uh, you know, so they have suspicious activity reports. They're creating government office. And every time a tweet, you say something offensive, you say like, um, um, I don't like being raped by immigrants. I hate when immigrants rape me or something, you know. <laughs> The, the, I hate when an Im I hate when an immigrant stabs me. I hate being stabbed. That, that's being crazy. Stabbed so that, there's a, that's what I, I mean. It's it's like they're trying to get all the information they can, and a lot of times everyone always talks about this. You're just talking, and if you have Facebook on your phone, as soon as you open it up, you're just blasted with ads, whatever you're talking about. It's like no privacy. You don't own any data. In fact, a good example of this is you go on a website, you log in with Facebook. And your Facebook accounts get shut shut down. You can't log into no that reason. website ever again. You're toast. No reason. I mean, it's just it's garbage. So, so there. So this was a private company, right? But these companies merged with the state, and they're working. They're electing these campaign officials. They are supporting their election campaign, and they're censoring their opposition. So the the election the the politicians say Facebook, Twitter, you will support me, and you'll stop these other political parties from winning. And uh, in exchange, they, they become state monopolies. They can't censor YouTube and Twitter without giving them a state monopoly, which means implicitly that they're going to shut down the competitors. They don't, because otherwise people just leave to a new platform when they get censored. So what you're seeing is these tech companies and the government are merging and they're creating a government office for suspicious activity reports to algamate all of the crap. The government says, you're going to ban people who say this. 
we have this policy uh, you, if you don't like being stabbed by Syrian refugees, then you're a racist. And uh, and you got and all those tweets. Anyone complaining about Syrian refugees stabbing them has to be reported to the to the Gestapo. And they're gonna they're gonna have a suspicious activity report, and it's gonna go to this government agency that then determines. If you go from Twitter to Facebook or a new platform, they'll say, well, this guy got banned on this platform and they'll give a notification to Twitter that they have to ban that guy because he was banned on Facebook. So they're starting to cross coordinate political censorship and, and creating like hit lists. They have a hit no, like I, this database of everyone who supported list. Trump. Like for me in property management, sometimes I believe they have a hit list against me like Zillow. I yeah. can't ever list on their platform again. And then there's other websites. It's, it's the same thing. So I feel like they're all Airbnb. Polluting. Dude, it's They garbage. say like if you support if you support uh, Trump, you get banned from Airbnb. Um, if you uh, 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 tweeted for the wrong political party, you get banned from Airbnb. You get banned from Uber. You get banned from your bank. Bank of America shuts down your account. Um, your credit cards get shut down. You can't get insurance. Um, you can't get loans. They, they, they have a system that they've been testing this for a while. It's just to cut you off from everything. Like you're not going to have a car. You need Uber. But then you said this tweet, Uber doesn't work for you anymore because you're on a blacklist. They said they put, they were going to put everyone who went to the, the, the protests on the 6th uh, in, in DC on the no fly list and say you can't fly on a plane because you went to a, a political protest. <laughs> what? So, um, so they say, like, if you went to BLM protest, good. But you went to that protest, you're terrorists. So we're going to put you on no-fly list because we don't support that p- party. We support That's this garbage, party. Man. So, but so this is the reality we're going to live in, and they're going to they're passing laws requiring real IDs, requiring if you have a web public website, you're going to need a government license, and that means in the EU, the government it, they have to get your ID, your information, and they know who's communicating, and you can be, and they need that, and you need to be registered in the EU so that they can find you with a lawsuit for hate speech laws. Because if some guy, pretend you go to Russia and you get a serve in Russia and put your website there, how does the EU find you for hate speech for a Russian website? So they have to actually start banning all the websites outside the EU unless they get a license from the EU, you see, in order to enforce the hate speech laws. So that this new, this is what they're gonna be doing over the next 10 or 20 years. This is what they're doing right now. So we're going to I, I see it. But that's why that's why Skycoin's so interesting. I'm I'm trying to figure out how you're gonna do this. Like how in the world are you gonna decentralize this thing? And I understand people gotta run out there with satellites and get it going, but not that's satellites. Amazing. So so this is eight computers. This this you know, you can store terabytes of data. You you just put these in your home. We don't need Amazon people host it themselves in their home. We actually have more, and we have more nodes right now for Skywire than Ethereum does. So there's more people. I think it's like like what is it, eight thousand, fifteen thousand. I, I should remember the number. I should get this before the thing. But the live stream can't remember what the number was. It's some. It's a. Um, but anyway, this. Um, these are going to host the websites, right? They're going to host the data, and it's going to be peer to peer replicated. Everything's public keys. There's no ID. It can't be censored. Like I don't tell. I have my computer. And, and the blockchains I run, I put whatever I want on them and you put whatever you want on yours. There's no uh, third party controlling that data. It's the publisher controls the data and decides what they're gonna publish and what they're gonna allow. So, and, and that's it. It's really, it's, really, it's really simple. It's just really, it's just, uh, so I think that's, that's what we have to do. And that's what's gonna be hap- that's what's gonna happen over the next 20, 10 or 20 years. And we're going to have massive civil unrest and yellow jacket protests. And, and if, you, if you look at their riots breaking out in, in London, right, in France, in Germany, and, and we're going into economic crisis, businesses are going to start going under because of the lockdowns and because of the mass amount of debt in the economy, unemployment's going to go up, food prices are going to go up. And the, the, these political movements like Occupy Wall Street, the yellow jacket protests, they were shut down by the oligarchs, right? These owners that, you know, and they, they, they saw this as a threat. They don't want 40 million people protesting. Right. If Trump said, take DC, sev- there's 70 million people who will get off their ass and go and just kick out the, the, the swamp creatures from DC, right? So they don't want that. So they have to convince Trump, don't do that. Don't go to the, you know, Mao went right to the public. He didn't go to these academics and he didn't go to the media. Mao went right to the peasants. He went right to the public and he just said, go, you know, go out and 
kill those people, right? Go out and, and destroy our class enemies. Oh, no, I, I saw it when, like, the... the shutdown happened. He was going welding doors shut. Like, when they closed it down, he was welding doors shut. Oh, that, that that's... One. <laughs> That's right. But um, no, but I mean, you know, Mao, Mao in the Cultural Revolution in the 1960s, he didn't go through this bureaucracy, right? Yeah. And he went right to the public. So these elites, they're, they don't like Trump. They don't like him having a voice like Twitter where he can go right to the public. They want everything to go through the media, the news AP, Twitter, Facebook. They have to control all the links between the people in power and the public to, or else People will go right to the public. They'll get a mob together and they'll chase out the oligarchs, right? right. So, so these people, when they, when they see the, these billionaires, they see these protests, these insiders, these, these people, when they see these people revolting against the system that they've built, they see 40 million people, 70 million people ready to mobilize. To them, that's the beginning of a coup a civil war these people can come in they could nationalize the bank they could throw them in prison for all the illegal shit they did so it's very if they don't con keep control of the government they're going to go to prison or get killed or they're going to you know lose them the money spigot and 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 you know these groups are fighting the control of the federal reserve they're fighting the control of the the printing of money who's going to get the coronavirus money you know is it tr this guy or is it that guy we're putting up two trillion dollars who gets that two trillion Right. And this is a question about politics. So they want to shut down all opposition. They want to turn, they want to get rid of freedom of speech. They want them, they own the media now, and they want all alternatives to the media they own to be eliminated. They want a monopoly that's grant, and this monopoly will be granted by the state. So they, and they'll use the monopoly to control the state. So what we're seeing is um, fascism. We're seeing the merger of corporate power with government power. To keep these oligarchs in place and they and they're doing a lot of bullshit like they're doing lockdowns they're doing the great reset they're doing uh you know the new green deal they're doing all of these tricks right like two billion two trillion dollars of, of of bailout checks right and these tricks are basically to keep the system going for a little bit longer but we're heading into a but it never works if you look at human history if you look at rome if you look at the decline of these empires It'll keep them going another six months and then you have another crisis. So we're heading towards a period of instability, mass protests. I, I don't think the media censorship and what they're doing is gonna work. I don't think people are gonna accept having a YouTube where it's just like the same shit as uh, whatever the, you know they're shoving down your throat because a lot of these, like you don't have an opinion. This, we will give you your opinion. If you disagree with us, your opinion is fake news. It's we wrong. We can only censor so long. You can only censor Our so fact long. checkers it's just like say Santa your Claus. opinions are wrong. Your opinions are wrong. Our fact checkers have, have, have declared that your opinions are wrong. Only our opinions are true. Our opinions are facts. Your opinions are lies, right? That, that's why Skycoin interests me. So it's like, I, know, I, I see you have all the antenna, all, well, not the antenna, but like the little Skycoin liner. <laughs> but what's going to happen? <laughs> Oh, you have that too antenna. over there? <laughs> Where's, where the fuck did they put it? <laughs> yeah, oh, what, who stole it? Someone stole my antennas. <laughs> you got to send me some of them antennas, man. Yeah so, so, yeah, so we built the antenna, the hardware platform, the hardware wallet, the programming language, the blockchain platform. But we started building this 10 years ago. And when we were talking about this at the beginning, no one knew what the hell, like, what, 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 what do you mean? And they didn't understand it. But then this election came and it's just, it's everyone's face now. And it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. You know, this is just really the start of, they're going to do whatever they can get away with. And um, I, I want to say the future is going to be wonderful and it's going to be utopia, but it's not. You know, like we're going into financial collapse, yeah. debt default, 40 million people on the street protesting, um, you know, we're civil war, succession. We're going, you know, the period of history that we're going into based on all the indicators is going to be rough. And, and so if you look at Bitcoin, it's at 60,000, but no one's excited. I look at, at the bubble 2008, everyone's talking Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. It's like Lambo, 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 Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Everyone's, it's just, it was crazy. It was mania, but Bitcoin's at 60,000. And, People are, you know, the economy is dev They're not happy because the economy is destroyed. They're all this mask lockdown shit. The um, their companies are struggling, and they lost money on every single thing that wasn't Bitcoin. They lost money on gold this year, real estate, stocks, 
they're everything but Bitcoin's down. So yeah, they made a little bit of Bitcoin here, but they lost money everywhere else. So yeah, because it's valued in cash, what they're valuing the value of Bitcoin and cash is just going down and cash is trash. So it's kind of like nothing. But I gotta ask you, so you're gonna have these de- well, the internet decentralized. Where is all that data gonna go? Because eventually it's gonna be so much. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> how, how many terabytes can that hold? So we have a SkyNAS that we're developing. It's a, it's a new product and it's basically like 10 terabyte hard drives uh, per node. And, um, but is that going to be know, enough? 30 no- like so Amazon is inter- just fully loaded with data storage. The whole internet is 300 terabytes. All really? the websites, PDFs, JavaScript for all languages. If you, yeah, 300 terabytes. So if you, you can buy 30 drives, 10 terabyte drives, and you can store the whole internet. Uh, well, with, my computer is uh, um, half a terabyte. So it's almost, it's 500 gigabytes. Well, $200, $200 drive now is 10 terabytes, right? This is a medium sized drive. The largest drive is about 20 terabytes, but they're very expensive. Uh, 10 terabytes is good for the cost, right? So 10 terabyte, $200 drive, right? And the whole internet is 30 terabytes. You need about 30 of those. I have a, I have a, we have a NAS a network attached storage array. It has like 36 drives in it, 36 3.5 inch drives. So that can do three, um, 360 terabytes of data. So if, if I want to store a whole copy of the internet, all the HTML, JavaScript, um, and the, uh, the, the PDFs, and I don't know if that includes the images. It doesn't include the videos. I can do that in my office. And companies do that when you have to like do like database stuff, you know, with, you know, natural language processing. We we do data sets like that. And that that fits on one server rack. I can have a whole copy of the internet, even three or four copies at different points on. And uh, if you strip out the JavaScript, most of the internet is actually JavaScript because the, the HTML page, the text is like this. And then the JavaScript is like one yeah. meg freaking JavaScript. So if you strip out the JavaScript, it's 90% smaller. And then if you strip out everything that isn't English, it's smaller. So uh, so we're, we're at the point now where our dr- we can store a whole copy of the internet on one rack of servers, right? So, th- so that's how pretty come good. Amazon just has like warehouses full of these things for like their web hosting? What, what is so, it that's in there? Because it seems like, well, they got to store the whole internet. So it seems like it would be more than 300 terabytes because my computer is a half a terabyte and it's almost full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the internet is only, um, that's only, a, only, that's the public web, right? Then you have the dark web or the part of the internet that isn't, um, that's behind the firewall, right? That's your database. So if I'm a company... I could have 100, 200 terabytes of data, backup data every year, you know, every month even. Um, you can create a lot of customer data or uh, log data. Like if I'm a company and I have 100 million people on my website and I'm logging every login, IP address, you know, time that they logged in, every cat photo, every interaction, every message, then you're generating um a lot of data, like 10 terabytes a day. So that's why these network attached storage things are there. So, so what I'm, so the idea is um, we don't have to store everything. So if you have your blog, right. And your videos and say you have 40 ter- gigabytes of video, you need to have enough storage space f- to store your videos. And if your friend is also replicating um, you know, subscribes to your videos, he could replicate the metadata, which is just, you know, it's a few kilobytes, just your video name, the thumbnail, and a hash to find the, the, the video. Then the video is actually distributed over something like BitTorrent. So everyone downloading the video is contributing bandwidth. And you'll go and you'll get some guy, a data center, and you'll pay him like some Skycoin hours, and he'll run a node that replicates your whole video channel. Transcode, you know, and he'll be on right? A- no, no, it'll just just a file like BitTorrent, right? So you have a, you know like a seed box, right? It just sits there, downloads the thing, and uploads. So you you'll publish your videos, the, this like the title, the date, the thumbnail, the small data, right? That only might be ten kilobytes, very small. But in there is a hash, a small hash, and if you have that hash, you can get the video file. 
and the video file, the big data is going to be over like BitTorrent. So, or something like BitTorrent. It's very similar to BitTorrent. And if you want, don't want to, um, if your subscribers want to get the video, you don't want it to go through your home cable modem, whatever. You'll just pay some guy to, you know, he has a couple data centers and he'll do six nodes that are each have a full copy of all your videos. And so when a user goes, it'll mostly download from them, you know, from the, this guy on a fiber optic backbone. And he had, you know, and they have a 10 gigabit ethernet and things like that. So, so I think that you don't have to worry about storing all the data on Skywire. Right. We didn't put all the data on one blockchain. So th the problem with Ethereum is you throw all the data on one blockchain and then it, it's huge. Why do I have to store all this data for 100,000 other people I don't care about, right? In, in CX chains, you only care about how much data do you need for your videos, your blog, your Twitter. And that's all you care about. And then so you basically have, and, and it's you like, find, it's like um, Google, like they were explaining. So you go to Google, you search for anything and it pulls up a bunch of different websites, basically website name, HTML, and then you click it and then it takes, takes you somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Just the that index. Makes sense. So theta, I, I don't know if you looked into it. I, I was talking to you about it a little earlier. But basically what Theta does is when you upload a video and you're starting to watch that video, it'll, mm -hmm. so like, say if someone's going live, I'm watching live on my computer, I'll get paid T Fuel for watching, like T Fuel is quote unquote coin hours. Um, you get paid to watch their video because now you're mm -hmm. transcoding it into 4K or a higher definition. Mm. So someone else can watch your live stream. Because if you, if like five or 6,000 people go on a website or one thing all at once, it's going to close the website down or it won't be able to ping on different people because it can only upload so fast. So what Theta is doing is that one person, instead of everyone going to that one computer that's automatically uploading, yeah, yeah, peer -to -peer, it's like picking it up from one computer and now the next person is picking it up from that computer and then so on. So that's why I was saying, yeah, yeah. is this similar to Theta? or Theta would be built on Skycoin? We can actually, with CX chains right now, we could, if you have a video like 30 frames a second, we could actually just put the frames in the blockchain and publish a block every two seconds. We're able to, we could stream, we, and they're peer-to-peer -peer replicated, the block. So we, we could actually stream video while using a blockchain. You'd have your own blockchain, for, a single blockchain for each video feed. We're able on a technical level to do that. But right now, we actually, it doesn't work too well if it's over two gigabytes of data. So you'd be fine until your video got to two gigabytes and then, uh, and then it would crash. So we still have to fix some things. So I, I, yeah, it's very similar. So, so basically, um, if, you, if someone, you put your video on your channel, someone downloads the video, uh, the person uploading the video is, gets paid coin hours. So they're gonna get some small amount of money, you know, and, and they might run a server and it might cost two dollars a month in electricity and they might make three or four dollars a month for that running that server um in coin hours and things like that so there's a, there's an incentive so that as the network scales more people are going to be making more money to, to run more nodes and also when like the skycorn price goes up the number of nodes in the network starts increasing and exploding just because you know people get excited so the coin hour mechanism ensures that people are, can make money running servers hosting this content and and, that, and it's very it's very important and the payments are not actually that large but um you know to, to hook up a raspberry pi and solve some software just run it they see coins going into their wallet every month you know it's 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 fun you know people make 40 dollars a month 60 dollars a month and so on and then the coin price goes up and it turns into 600 yeah. and you know it's it's like mining it's like gpu mining you know it's it's not too bad i i noticed the coins were already all pre-mined so theoretically it's just like rewards that they get so like I, mm -hmm. someone was explaining to me that where your location is or like your computer you can only get a limited amount so like if you even have like 40 or 50 raspberry pies you can only get a certain amount it's not like six per raspberry pie per month uh we had um we had yeah, so we want to spread it over more users than we're not with the VPN and with these new file storage things, we're going to need every node that we can get. So we're going to go to a new model where we uncap it 
but basically like if we let a person have 150,000 miners, there's one guy who has a bunch of empty servers and he would run 100,000 miners and we'd have to pay him rewards, even if those miners were not being used. But once we go to a, so we wanted to have more people participating in the mining. So we put a cap on it um, so that we have 10,000 people doing it instead of like one guy writing all the notes. Uh, because there were some guy, guys who have empty servers and, uh, and you know, they have crazy resources, like 10 terabyte per second, um, you know, ISPs in Europe and 100,000 servers. And, you know, they have, um, I saw one guy like spin up 800 Docker cluster, 800 Docker instances per second. And it just the node count goes do, 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 do. Wow. It increases 800 per second until it hit like a limit of like, 20,000 and then the software our software couldn't keep up because all the data was going through one server and, and the and it can't keep up processing all of the uh the the packets from the this thing and then it crashes and he would just do that to test like what 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 it can handle so um but when we go to bandwidth based pricing when when people start getting paid based on the usage by the users once we implement uh, the bandwidth uh metering then we're going to uncap it so it'll be as many anyone can run as many as they can but we don't want to we don't want one guy running 100,000 nodes and they're all empty and no one's using them and then we have to pay out rewards for them because it would just be crazy Some that's true favorite. that's true that makes a little sense i noticed when i uploaded the wallet uh to my computer it took a couple hours is that downloading the blockchain or what is that doing for the skycoin wallet yeah yeah, there's a lot of blocks now. It's like, what is a quarter? I don't think it's a quarter of a million yet. But anyway, there's a lot of blocks. And we haven't optimized the block downloading code. So in the new version, we're going to have something like a torrent file or some, you know, a flat file for the earlier blocks. And it's just going to download the whole thing at once really fast. And then, then it'll start downloading incrementally after that. And it's called the snapshot because when we're dealing with these 200,000 blockchains, in corporate data and databases and backups, we need to, you know, if you're keep if you keep writing to a database, like boop, 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 you know, 300 transactions a second, 24 seven, the, the transaction log is going to be uh, terabytes. So we need some way to allow a, a server to start that blockchain, get the current state and start running fast without having to download 200 terabytes. And we need some way to be able to prune the transaction log if necessary, if it's like a database, you know, server, they don't need the whole transaction log. For Skycoin, we need the transaction log for the Explorer and things like that. But we want to separate out the older transactions so that we can make sure that a node can always run if it only has two gigabytes or four gigabytes of RAM and a hard disk that's 10 gigabytes. Because if the blockchain is a, a terabyte, we don't want to have to sync a whole terabyte every time to start up a new node. We want to- Yeah, get, that'll get, be get brutal. That'll be like six hours, eight hours. So yeah, so these these are just things that we're dealing with on a on a technical level, and there's a lot of a lot of problems. Like we we launched the mainnet for Skywire and it worked, but then nothing happened for eight months because we found 160 bugs after launch, and we're just fixing <laughs> bugs for eight months. So it's like mainnet launched, but nothing happened. Or this VPN was done. It was, the people were using it years ago, but all you know. One week, it was supposed to be released two weeks ago, but then oh, we found another bug, and this was a you know they had to fix that bug, and and it was something like um, you know some node crashes and your VPN freezes up and whatever, so and some state lock weird state locking error, and so they just they they delayed it two weeks to fix that bug. So we're always uh, you know oh man, and and we're doing stuff for enterprise now, so. In enterprise, you have nine. It has to be nine, nine point nine, 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 nine. Meaning you get like uh, uptime, so you you get like two seconds outage in one month, and the customer complains because you know there's going to be things like cell phone tower data being routed over this, and if it drops, like you know the, the internet drops five seconds, then it might mean like cell you know cell phone conversations for 10,000 people dropped for five seconds or something, you know, or if it's down for two minutes, they get, so those are called SLA agreements. So they're, where they, they say that you have to have an uptime of nine, 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 nine. And if the internet goes down or something happens, they have to have this software that tracks the uptime 
so that they can say it wasn't us, it was Comcast, or it wasn't us, it was you, so that the, the, the provider can cover their ass and say that they met the SLA uptime agreement and that it wasn't their hardware. So there's like a whole bunch of like, uh, <laughs> you know, stuff that we, we have to do now with, you know, when you, when you have a company and, the, you know, the internet goes down, the whole company shuts down for two hours because there's no internet. So you, you can't let that, ha you know, they, you don't want to be blamed for that. Um, so, you know, we're, we're dealing and now it's like machines and factories and smart cars and mining equipment and, you know, stuff goes, the, inter the, the network goes down, they have problems that like everything shuts down, their sensors don't work, you know, it's chemical plant, it's a safety issue, you know, things like that. So we're, we're trying to, um, so, so anyway, we're just dealing with a lot of things now that like two years ago, I didn't think we'd have to deal with these things. So, so my roadmap though, so the VPN is, was launched, this is, I think it was launched yesterday, it should be launched. I don't know what time zone they're launching it in. It said Friday, so I think that might be Eastern. How does that time. VPN work though exactly? Is it um, similar to something like Surfshark? You just connect and that's it or? So basically um, I have a VPN server and endpoint and then I have my client. Normally a VPN will connect directly from the client to the endpoint. That's a single hop VPN. Skywire is basically the only multi-hop VPN. So if, if I, um, for instance, if I'm going in from Beijing to San Francisco, it might be very slow because there's a firewall and because of the, the way that the, uh, the ISP throttles traffic overseas because they have to pay more money over this cable than this cable, right? But this company owns a line directly to Japan. So if I go Beijing, J Tokyo, it's very, 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 very fast, right? Because they own a line, they, the fiber optic cable is empty. They own that cable. It doesn't cost them any money to run that, right? But if, uh, if I go from um, Beijing to uh, San Francisco, right? That's over another company's line and the ISP doesn't own that line. So they throttle your traffic, right? So if, I'm a, if I have my VPN, what I wanna do is I wanna go from Beijing to Tokyo and then Tokyo to San Francisco, because I want the Tokyo, um, I go to a data center for that is peered with the company that owns the fiber optic cable going to San Francisco. I see. So that it'll get throttled. That makes sense. So, so this is N hops. So I can go from this city to this city, to this city, to here. And I can actually, I can go and have my data go from here to here between two centers, um, to Tokyo, then in Tokyo, change from one ISP to another ISP, and then go to San Francisco. And you I, have I to actually, do that, or is that automatic with automatic? The okay. It's actually we're using even uh, now we're developing some AI software, some like, like machine learning to automate choosing the best routes, and uh, and automatically reconnecting. And another thing is I can have five or ten connections, so I can have different routes simultaneously uh, that are set up. And if one route fails, I can change over to another route instantly. So if, if you know, this gets blocked or whatever, it's less than half, a, it should be less than half a second uh, fall over. So there's redundancy and things like that. So things like robotics or, you know, remote controlling a truck in a mine site or something, you don't want the video feed to cut off for two, four seconds because the truck's on a hill and it might yeah. start rolling down the hill and like hit someone or some shit, you know? So you have, you have things like this where you have to deal with, you know, redundancy and quality of service and, and like teleconferencing and, and things like that. So we're, we're, you know, we're dealing with, um, you know, having multiple redundant circuits and routes and, uh, and this other thing called multi multiplexing and multi-homing. And, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's actually a lot of stuff. It took, it took eight years to develop the, this networking protocol and it, and it's not just one protocol. It's, uh, there's like eight or fifth up to 15 different microservices that are involved with operating this protocol. And the speed is actually faster than the normal internet. So under IP version four and IP version six, you don't have any control over where your packets are being routed. So they have a thing called hot potato routing. So the ISP will try to dump your packet on someone else as quickly as they can. Maybe they have a nationwide network like Comcast. They can send your packet from San Francisco to New York right over their fiber in a straight line. 
They never do that. They look at your packet and they say, who can I dump this packet on? And the first other ISP that they can dump the packet to, they dump it off the network on someone else so that the packet doesn't congest their fiber optic backbone so that they don't have to upgrade it. And so even, oh. if, even if the backbone's empty, they still do this. And this is called hot potato routing. So when you see your packet getting, when you do a trace route and you see your packets getting passed between 40 ISPs or your packet, you're, you're sending a packet to your neighbor and you see that the packet goes all the way like 400 miles, another state goes here, goes here, goes here, and then comes all the way back like 20,000 kilometers to go to your neighbor. It's because they're doing this, the way that they're doing hot, this hot potato routing, they, the packet never actually goes on the shortest path. So we're actually, by using Skywire, we're actually able to get lower latency than the current internet and higher throughput. And, um, and we're able to control the path that the data takes. So this is very, so for gaming and things like that, we're also trying to do a hardware product, which is a hardware VPN, which you plug it in and you have an in ethernet port and an out. And anything you plug into that, that box gets VPN through Skywire. And it's like for low, you know, lower latency, multi, you know, having multiple connections, fall over and things like that. So if I'm connecting to like a World of Warcraft server or something in, uh, uh, and the server is in San Francisco, I will connect to a data center in San Francisco as the output point. So the, the ping between that would be like two milliseconds, right? And okay. then I'll use Skywire to connect to the data center. So if I want to connect to someone, I find the closest Skywire node to, that data, to, that, uh, to the server I'm trying to connect to then I connect to that one and then I relay everything over Skywire to that server over multiple, so, over multiple routes. So I, I know you uh, mentioned packet about a minute ago. What is, what, what are you referring to when you say packet? Just like, like a packet, like a data. It's just, you know, a lump of data. Oh, okay. Like, so just the data you know, on your like computer. Data, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so uh, um, in the networking, everything's a packet. It's just like 10 bytes and it's like, boom, you know, 12 bytes, boom, 12 bytes, boom, you know, okay. and, everything in the network is packets so where can someone try this vpn is it on your website to download or i don't know where the, it's if you look on the release they should have did they release it yet i i have no idea i heard about it last night and that was really the most i heard about it i think there's an announcement i don't think they updated the website i think they posted it on github and i think it's the link should be in the announcement that they posted. Well, yeah, it's really weird because we have a bunch of people in South America and the guy who did the release and then he got on a plane. So he's uh, <laughs> he's in the air right now. So I don't, I don't know what the hell is going on. And it's Saturday over here. So everyone's off. And uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so the, um, so this VPN is very, very, in very interesting. And especially like for data center use uh, for like VLANs and like offices and um Things like uh, private clouds. You have like an like an AWS or uh, something, but it's on your computers in your office, so it's much 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 faster than going all the way across the earth to the other side of the earth to access your data whenever you need to. And you don't have to pay Amazon like you know ten cents every gigabyte of data you're transferred. You don't have to pay Amazon to store your data. You know, so you just you have a you have the, a private cloud basically. This is the newest right. thing. And so a company has the servers and they run this cloud environment. It looks like AWS to them. You know, it looks like it's a Dockerized environment, but it's in their office. But companies have multiple offices. So a lot of like for us, a huge, huge thing is just um, actually bridging these virtual clouds between the offices to put them on one namespace, one network namespace. So any, all, all your offices, they all look like one network your whole, for your whole company. So like Cisco has a product called MPLS and like Starbucks and, you know, very large companies use it because it's reliable. And um, we're, we built a very similar thing, which is like, a, you know, a Skywire can be used to replace MPLS deployments. So we're, we're Oh, anyway, sure. so so nine, all the money is in the corporate and all the work is in the corporate and I shouldn't even talk about it because it's so boring. But for the public, what's going to be most exciting besides the VPN is when you can have blockchain social media. When you, and when you can have your own blockchain, you can put whatever data you want on that blockchain and you own it. So that's what we're trying to do with CX right now. And so my, my workload for the last three months is I'm just doing code review on CX 
and our compiler and programming language, and I'm getting it ready for the 1.0 release when people can actually start using this. Skycoin so, sounds like 10 different uh, crypto projects in one. So it sounds like Cosmos because it's able to have like the different networks on it. And it sounds like live beer because it has a video transcoding, same as Theta. And then it also sounds like, um, what is that other? Well, uh, you can even consider it as a payment mechanism too because the transaction fees are ridiculously low. And then it sounds like Stacks. Have you heard of Stacks? No. Um, Stacks is basically, uh, it's like the app store, but it's uh, built on the Bitcoin platform and it's mm. you own your own data um your library library yeah, for video yeah. hosting. it's similar to that so with uh skycoin i i read on the website there was um there's no such thing as a 51 percent attack on the network so obelisk when this right now we don't have 50 percent attempt to mask the master node implementation but Obelisk, when it's implemented, you can't attack the network anymore with hashing power. You can't, uh, so proof of work and proof of stake, they work, but I, I wouldn't consider them to be perfect protocols. They, they have problems. So the, uh, the Obelisk is gonna be based on web of trust and, it, and not just for sky coins, it's one coin, but it's gonna be what's for public coins, like coins posting public applications and things like that. This is a way of, People to be able to join. It's a way of decentralizing um, consensus, like Satoshi originally intended, which is to have two hundred thousand people, where you know it, the network isn't controlled by three people. It's going two hundred thousand people, and so to get a hundred thousand people to start screwing up the network is pretty hard. You know, to get four people to attack the network or two companies to attack the network, you could probably do that, but try to get ten thousand people to coordinate. And, and you know attack the network and then even if they do that what obelisk does is it detects them and it lets the other people kick off the attacking nodes they just they uh anyway i, I, I could do an obelisk for two hours i should i don't want to get into the details but there's like what's called a trust list which every public key has a trust list and those and it's a list of public keys of nodes like delegated trust. proof of stake no, no, well, well. So I have a, my public key, and then I have a list of public keys that I trust, people that I know personally, right? Okay. And if some of the nodes on the network start attacking the network or slowing it down, people will start removing the public keys of those nodes off their trust list. And what ends up happening is eventually they get to like no one connection, two connections, zero connections, and as the number of nodes that as the number of people on these people get kicked off the network. So it's not like banning like Skycoin org says, we're going to ban this public key. It, as these people are detected that they're attacking the network, they automatically get removed from people's trust lists and they get isolated. So we don't have to, when you attack you, yeah, you could attack the network, but the only thing you can really, you can't spend other people's money. You can't steal their money and you can't double spend. The only thing that you can do, to attack the network is slow down your trans slow down transactions. And when they start doing this, the software automatically detects which nodes are doing it, gets the list of nodes. And then in a decentralized manner, those nodes automatically get kicked off the network without a centralized moderator. And so you attack the network once you get kicked off then what, you know, so, so it, it's almost useless to even try to attack the network. You don't get anything for it. How so come other you, networks you know, aren't uh, implementing something like Obelisk? Is it open source or is it? Um... Yeah, it's open source. So there are a bunch of, because consensus isn't really, it's interesting and it's something we need to solve in the long term, right? In 10 years, 20 years, but Bitcoin's consensus isn't perfect, but it works. It works well enough for trillions of dollars of transactions. So um, consensus is something that we're going to continue to have advances with, just like we had ring signatures and, you know, zero quantum proof, blah, 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 blah. And, and you know, coin join. There's going to be innovation in, in consensus, right? But consensus basically is not exciting. It just, it's just some algorithm. It runs and it works. As long as it works, people don't care. They don't right. care, but then when there's a problem, then they panic. And 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 the the types of consensus that have had massive problems, people just stop using. 
and proof of work, proof of stake, proof of work hybrid, it sort of works, but it's not going to work for a hundred. The reason we don't have personal blockchains, why you don't have your personal blockchain is because of the mining costs. It, you know, you have to buy a bunch of mining equipment and you maybe have one GPU, right, for your thing. But then some guy comes along with 10 GPUs and he could 51% attack your blog, right? Yeah. And what is he going to do? Put like dick pics on your blog or like slow down your blog post, you know, like what? Like what? So um, we have to go beyond proof of work and proof of stake, not to do Bitcoin and Ethereum, but to go to personal blockchains. So the reason we don't have personal blockchains for our data is because of the consensus, and so Skycoin had to do Obelisk in order to do CX chains because small coins are very easy to 51% attack. Oh yeah. And so by limit, eliminating 51% attack, we eliminate mining costs. And then when we don't have a mining cost, we can now have a hundred thousand blockchains because they only cost 10 cents per month or year or whatever in electricity to run. We don't need, you know, giant GPU farms to run a single blockchain anymore. That makes sense. Okay. Okay, so um, with the Skycoin platform, is, does it allow for smart contracts or it just has that CX coding language, which is more than just smart contracts? So it allows people to build their own chains. So I, I'm, I'm understanding it like this, like Cosmos has Tendermint. People use Tendermint and yeah. they code. Yeah. So the CX is going to be a revolution in blockchain. I can have first person shooters. I can have online poker. I can have video streaming. I can have chat apps like Telegram. I can have SQL databases. The CX when it's done is going to be as fast as C and it's memory safety and has all these features. It actually is compiled down into LLVM IR and it runs directly on the CPU. So this isn't like JavaScript with some V8 interpreter and it's not limited to the blockchain. I can run any program that I can run on a computer on blockchain now. So that includes video games, chat apps, whatever. Smart contracts, it's a joke. It, it's like, it's a little, it's a toy. It's like a little like, you know, web widget. It's, uh, it's like the internet in, in 1994, right? And, you know, JavaScript and I can make the cats move and you know, like, oh, look at the dancing cat with the JavaScript and I can do JavaScript snowflakes. Remember when JavaScript came out? Are I don't remember when all? it came out, man. Oh, I, I do like remember the, the old flakes and the, everything was the, just the like all simple. And a good example is just shit. go visit uh, Avagachi. That was the old school internet. They, they went with the old school style. And so they, but then JavaScript, you had all the shit moving around and the, you could move the image and, you know, it was, they make noises and whatever. We're still at that stage with blockchain. We're, we're at like this 1994, 1998 internet that just got JavaScript. Um, we're, we're not at, um, and they don't, it's, I don't know. I, I, I don't really, I feel like as soon as people started focusing on money and just money, Lambo, pump and dumps, that all of the innovation blockchain stopped. I, I feel like not a lot of this has happened in terms of the core blockchain technology in the last six years. I don't feel like it's, it's moved forward very much, if at all. I don't think Ethereum, like Ethereum is just JavaScript. It's everyone just copied Ethereum. Smart contracts are still locked in. They haven't changed much since Ethereum launched. And there's, and that's been generation two. And uh, so what we're trying to do is generation three, and it's going to be a qualitative difference it's not going to be like oh we did 500 transactions and you did 100 transactions a second it's not going to be oh our blockchain's bigger or it's not going to be like um um you know whatever we have more blocks per second our blocks are bigger it's a, this is going to be a revolution in terms of what applications you can actually write so like i wanted to do blockchain poker i wanted to have a poker game where the poker table data was completely on a blockchain and can I do that? And I cannot do that with Ethereum. And I have people that have implemented DEX before and it costs $900 in gas fees on Ethereum. So you have, we have the technology to do DEX, but we can't do it because of gas fees. So what I think is 
we need this technology working so that we can actually have decentralized exchanges. And this is going to become very important because if we look at Binance and the U.S. government came after them. They have Binance USA. They can't list as many tokens on Binance USA as they do in Binance China. So now we have the crypto market for the U.S. and we have the crypto market for the world and they're cut off. The order books are not, you have different order books for America than you have for the rest of the world. Oh no, And it's American garbage, investors, man. it's so fragmented. So the, the second revolution in crypto, the next revolution is only going to come after we have decentralized media because YouTube, Facebook, Twitter is censoring crypto. And the next revolution will come after uh, we have a, a, a global liquidity pool which is like Binance was um, two, three years ago before it split between Binance and Binance US because that's what's slowing down the crypto market now. Well, we got Uniswap. That's what's limiting. What's, what is, what's that on though? Uniswap? Yeah. Uniswap is a decentralized exchange. It's massive. Um, it's on Ethereum. You can trade basically But the gas fees. So it's, it's Uniswap's for ERC-20 only, and it's only, and sometimes you do a trade and it's $50, right, in gas fees. Yeah. So the gas costs are ridiculous. I don't want to, I want to pay zero fees. I want to go back to, remember we had zero fee exchanges and all the fees were zero? And then they started doing like 0.1%, then 0.2, then 0.3. Then we went to DEX, and now my transaction fee is $50 every trade because of Ethereum gas fees. So we have to go back to, we have to have DEX, but we need to have $0 fees. It has to be zero fee. Or I know they have like more layer more. two solutions. So what do you think about something like ZK Swap or Matic? Basically it's a layer two. So you pay the ETH gas fee once, get your funds on layer two, and then you can trade for less than pennies. It's fractions of pennies to make transactions. The liquidity is uh, not as much as Ethereum, like if you go on Uniswap, you have like you can just swap just ten, fifteen thousand dollars with these. Um, but like if you go on like a layer two, it's going to be a lot more of an issue unless you're like swapping ETH for USDC or um, ETH for. Rapid it only works coin. for ERC. It only works for ERC twenty though, and we need to eliminate all the gas fees. If I have my own Dex and I have my own blockchain, I could do 300 transactions a second, 5,000 transactions a second. But right now the DEX is running on Ethereum. So it's sharing the blockchain with 100,000 other applications. And so the question is, why should my application have to share data and transaction rate with 100,000 other transactions, uh, uh, other database? Pretend I have a database, right, in my company. Why would I put all, if a database has 10,000 transactions a second, why would I put every transact, every database in the world into one database? So everyone has to share one database, right? I want my own database with, with 10,000 transactions per second for my application. Why do I have to store the data for everyone else's application, right? When we, when we do a company, when we have, we have this database for this, this database for that, this database for that, we keep them split up. And it, it doesn't make sense to have like one database and then throw all the, the data of the world for every company and every application on one database because it'd be, it'd be slow, it'd be expensive. So, um, so, this, I, so since we don't have personal blockchains, you can't have your own blockchain for a DEX yet. But when you do, there's gonna be no reason to use these Ethereum DEXs. And when we do, the transaction fee is gonna be zero. So the, the, the and you have to also understand the DEX, the DEX protocols are very limited because of Ethereum gas fee. There are very good methods, DEX protocols, but if you implement them, it would cost $900 a transaction on Ethereum. Once we move off Ethereum to a personal blockchain, we can start doing very interesting uh, algorithms and, um, and like uh, there's a thing like I have a collateral. I put some collateral somewhere, right? Like $10,000. And I'm, my trades are all going to, individual trades are going to be less than $10,000. And you post a thing, I want to buy Bitcoin for Skycoin, whatever, right? And I say, okay, I will sell you the Skycoin. So you, you do a thing. I send you a thing saying, I will take your offer. Then that offer is locked, right? Then you give me an address. I send you the, the, the uh, you know, the thing. You send me the thing. 
and uh, and we we settle, right? But that can fail. Like I can send you the money, but you didn't send me my, mine. Then there has to be a third party, and they see that you didn't agree to the, you didn't fulfill the contract. Then they can take the ten thousand dollars out of the collateral and send it to me because for the money I didn't receive, right, or whatever. So um, then um, then no one loses money. So, but then if you, I send you Skycoin, you send me Bitcoin, it settles, right? Off the exchange. You send it directly to me. I sent directly to you. The contract is fulfilled. So the collateral isn't touched. And now my collateral is still sending there. So I have another trade, less than $10,000. And so what I have is I don't have to, if I'm doing a million dollars of transactions a day, I don't need to post $1 million. I only need collateral posted for $10,000 or $20,000. And that collateral is never touched. That collateral only needs to cover the active transactions that are un, unsettled, right? The unsettled transactions. So I can do a transaction, $10,000, settles. Then do another transaction five minutes later for $10,000, settled. Another transaction, settled. So I can move $100 million a year, $100 million a day, but I only need this much in collateral. And, and if the transactions, if the contracts are fulfilled, the collateral is never touched. So what I have now is I don't have an exchange. I have a, you give an offer. I accepted the offer. The offer was locked. We settled, it, it went through. And if it didn't go through, um, then I have another blockchain where I can have some, the, the contract entered in. It can check the addresses, see that it wasn't settled and then do this, this stuff, right? So I can do a peer to peer exchange where I don't have to deposit money into exchange. I, I, I give us I give us offer, someone takes the offer, then the two parties settle between each other with never depositing the money on the exchange. You see? So this is the next generation of DEX. This is a global liquidity pool where anyone can just post whatever they want and you have a reputation score. No one can get screwed. There's no transaction yeah. fees. And we can implement that, but we but the tech you can't do it on Ethereum. So, so this, this, next, this next generation blockchain, the blockchain 3.0, there are some decks, but it's, it's not going to be, this is the final decks. This is what's going to replace all the exchanges in the next generation. Um, and this is, and there's gonna be no transaction fee, not even 0.1%. There's no reason to have a transaction fee. And also, so this idea is if I have a personal blockchain, I can, you can have an order, book pool. He can have an order book pool. I can have 20 order book pools on different blockchains. I download all of them and then I choose which one to execute on. So I don't even have to keep the transactions on one blockchain. I can federate it. So I can have 20 blockchains, 40 blockchains. Anyone could create their own order pool, right? Their own, uh, their own um, thing where an order, a contract can be posted. Someone can take it. It can be locked and so on. And then I can have, um, you know, maybe one pool for liquidity or for the collateral, which is pretty minor, right? Something like Skycoin or something. On. So th these types of blockchain applications, they're not a single database. Like if everything on Ethereum is on a single database. These are going to be components. Like here's the Oracle database. Here's one order book database. Here's another order book database. Here's the settlement. It's going to be a, a distributed system of blockchains and these applications are going to be much more complicated but they're also going to be simpler when I, when I look at a lot of these protocols and smart contracts I, I really don't understand what the hell they're doing it, it's not it's not simple so we need to, to to get blockchain usable we need to simplify it we need to increase the capacities we need to so 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 what I think this is going to do is I think this is the start and I don't think it's just going to be skycoin I think that other people are going to understand the advantages of these architectures and that hopefully other people also implement similar architectures. But I think Skycoin is definitely going to be the first one because I, I really don't see a lot of people doing this. I, I yeah, that, that's really interesting. Um, like I know on Matic, the fees are ridiculously low, but there's no liquidity. And it'd be interesting to have um, Uniswap with low fees and they're talking about V3 might be like on layer two. So the fees are gonna be ridiculously low. I don't know if you've heard about that, but um, I guess East 2.0 is coming around the corner maybe in two years. So that could be another thing too. They've been saying that for six years though. Yeah, that's, uh, they, they have been saying it for a while, that's true. Well, I wouldn't say six years, probably about three years. 
They've been around since what, 2016? My, my feeling on the, I don't think the Ethereum, remember they switched like proof of work to proof of stake and it was like, Yeah, they're going oh, proof of stake now. It's not yet, that's ETH 2.0 is staking. They're gonna I, I go sharding. What I, what I saw in their specification, I think that it'll improve the transaction throughput a little bit, but I don't think that it's really, it's just it's a little upgrade. It's not going, it's not a new, it's not a revolution in terms of what Ethereum can do. Like I still can't do blockchain poker. And the other thing is with these, the layer two, when I'm building, embedding blockchains on blockchains, um, I have to move the tokens layer two and then also move them from layer two back to layer one. So doing this is just really annoying. Then it's transaction fees. And, and I, I have people trying to use Ethereum and they, they have trouble using Ethereum. They, it's hard. It's not, um, you know, there's a huge, 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 huge learning curve. And now when we say, well, I got these coins, but they're layer three coins or layer two coins or layer five, <laughs> layer like three. they can't even get, yeah, like I, they can't even get Ethereum working in the, with Trezor. So how are they going to use like a, a layer two smart contract, you know, Cosmo? Oh, Dex, dude, people Atomic don't know swaps, anything like, outside of Coinbase, man. They're like, where do I get yeah, this? Ever, all their fucking Uniswap. coins are on Coinbase. And dude, I, I say go on Uniswap and they're like, what's that? It's not on Coinbase. I'm not buying it. Oh, okay, whatever. Go for it. They don't have a wallet. They All of the coins are actually on Binance or Coinbase. Yeah, they don't get it. Just like Skycoin. Uh, like 80% of your coins are on Binance right now. Is it 80? I think it's only 30%, right? No, so it's 25 it's, million. There's one that holds like 75 Six million. or 60 million or something like that. Wait, no, no, no. It's not 75. No, no, it's no, like no. 7.5. There's, million. yeah, there, there's one, there's an account on Binance in their hot wallet with 7.5 million coins, and there's 25 million coins outstanding. So about a third of them are on Binance. Yeah. It looks like. So with oh, these coin yeah. hours, I know Binance is getting most of them. Uh, I got like, yeah, three questions left. No, uh, huh? They burned, they, no, no, Binance. Okay, so Binance is not getting the coin hours. They haven't upgraded their wallet software in three years. So every time you do a withdrawal, they burn all their coin hours. Really? Yeah, because they're using a two-year-old version of the, the wallet. So technically all those coin hours are non-existent, like that they have posted out there. Yeah, huh. they, they, they're in the hot wallet, but they're, they're just like burnt. So, so these coin hours, like businesses, when they're using the network, they're just going to buy Skycoin, right? To get the coin hours to run their services. So the whole idea is we're going to lock up the coins because businesses are basically going to be buying the coins, just holding them to get the coin hours to run like networking and storage services. So the, so the whole idea is I think eventually all, we want to create a liquidity crunch. That's what we're trying to do in the long term. Okay. So when all the uh, coins are rolled out, what's going to happen or, or when people pay for transaction fees or pay to use the internet, um, are they going to be paying or buying coin hours to pay or what? Because eventually if there's such a liquidity crunch, these, these coins are going to be really valuable. Yeah. So what we did in Skycoin, if the price goes up, people will stop spending it. So that, so we created coin hours. So every hour that you own a coin, you get a coin hour. So a coin hour gives you sort of like a return, right? So if I need like 10,000 coin hours a month or whatever to run my storage or my internet or my VPN, I can either buy the coin hours directly or I can buy the Skycoin that will generate the coin hours. That makes and sense. And so you have two... And that, so by divorcing Skycoin from, so the coin hours are deflation, inflationary. They keep expanding, expanding. There's always new coins being created. So this divorces the, um, the market for the bandwidth and the storage and the computation from the Skycoin price, because we don't want the economic activity and like VPN usage to, to stop whenever the Skycoin price starts going up because people are hoarding. Because when the price goes up, people hoard. So the, so the coin hours are, I think, the best solution for that. And the other thing is, it's also because we need a, a coin hour is coin per time or the coin derivative with respect to time. So storage space, one gigabyte of storage space is actually meaningless. It, it, it's, it's one gigabyte per 
hour, right? Or gigabyte hours. So if I, I have 10 gigabytes and I store them for one hour, or I have uh, one gigabyte and I store it for 10 hours, they use capacity. So I have a drive and I can only store so many gigabytes, right? And, um, but storing one gigabyte for an hour is not the same as storing one gigabyte for two, two years. Because the one gigabyte for one hour will be uh, go away and I'll get the space back. But the thing being stored for two years, that'll take up the resource for two years. So, um, and bandwidth is the same thing. So there's some things that have a unit of time. They're, they're not uh, like a fixed unit. Um, resource cost is actually a unit of time or it's actually a rate. So like, um, um, and so we have to have a notion or we have to be able to compute the resource cost. Like if someone is using resources on the network, we have to be able to compute how much resource that is. So, it, so in Ethereum, they don't charge for storage, but they charge you per transaction. So, every, so you, you get free storage. No, there's no fee for it. But every transaction costs money every time you want to change any data. On EOS, the transactions are very cheap, almost free but you have to pay a, a massive amount of money for storage. And what this means on Ethereum is you can use a lot of data, but don't do any transactions, minimize the transactions. And on EOS, you can do as many transactions as you want, but you're going to pay out the ass for any data. So don't use data, keep your, okay. you know, so, but most applications use data and need lots of data and lots of transactions, right? So, so this idea at blockchain of resource cost is something very, very new and it's not solved. So in Skycoin, what we did was, first of all, no transaction cost for the CX chains. So there's no reason to have a transaction cost. Second, everyone has their own personal blockchain. We don't force anyone to replicate the blockchain. The only people who will download a copy are the people that use it. We don't charge you anything for running, doing a transaction. We don't charge you anything for running a node on your own personal blockchain. And, um, but if you're using someone else's resources like storage, right, then you have to have a way of pricing it. And pricing it in Skycoin doesn't make sense because if the Skycoin price goes up 5X, then the amount you're paying for storage goes up 5X. So right. there's too much volatility for businesses. But if it's priced in Skycoin, uh, coin, if it's in coin hours, then you know, like, um, you know, if I have this many coins in my wallet, it will generate enough coin hours to buy the resources I need for that month. So in one month, it generates this many coin hours, which is enough to produce the produces the resources, the uh, enough to buy the resources I need for that slot of time. So it's a fix. It's basically a fixed cost, and then there's like a return, you know, return percentage, and and you can even make money just owning an excess of Skycoin, having the coin hours, and selling off the the excess to people that want to buy them on the on the spot market. Yeah, so when there, can so you there's... sell these coin hours? Because it seems like there's no exchanges. They aren't listed anywhere. So you don't really know how to sell it. There's a, a couple, I think like XBT or something. There are a couple, but I think that the exchange needs to be integrated into the Skycoin ecosystem. And we, we really wanted Binance to list coin hours, but it's a sort of um, annoying. It's just... just uh, I don't, I don't know what's going on over there. So we're, um, we, I think we're going to internally integrate, especially if we're doing Dex and we're, we're doing a lot of these applications. I think we're going to need to have some internal system, internal order book and like wallet integration and the ability to swap between coin hours and Skycoin and, and to buy coin hours with Bitcoin. And I think that if we did that internally, we're going to have much lower fees than if we'd go through an exchange. Yeah, that, that would definitely help. So what's the cost of a coin hour? I think it was like 32,000 coin hours per sky coin. I, I don't know what the exchange rate is right now. Okay, so it's basically like hundredth of a penny, you'd say? Yeah. Okay. So, so but the idea... Go ahead. So if the coin hours have a price and you earn this many coin hours per year, if you want a sky coin, the coin hours are like earning a percentage on owning the sky coin. So you want a sky coin and the coin hour, the sky coin is like a money printing machine that prints coin hours. 
and um, so there's a certain return, which is if you you pay, if you pay ten dollars for Skycoin, and it produces one dollar of coin hours per year, then uh, that's one tenth of, of ten. So it's like ten percent return per year or something like that. So um, we're gonna. I don't really understand. We don't really know what the coin hour economy is going to be like until we implement mining for CP, uh, CPU mining, um, storage mining, and uh, bandwidth metering. So we, we have another thing that's similar to store J or similar to Filecoin where people are going to be able to earn rewards for, for storing data for third parties and things like that. And that's another platform thing that we're working on now. And, um, and things like renting out people's like Raspberry Pi nodes to run CX programs on them, like web servers or, you know, things like that. And I don't think that's going to be necessarily too popular. <laughs> like most people don't need a lot of computers, but if you're running like, uh, you know, a Telegram chat room or something in, you know, or like a 4chan board or something, you can lease that out. Or if you want to use the nodes as like seed nodes for like BitTorrent. So there might be a couple of people that use that, but mostly businesses doing storage and then consumers providing the storage space. And also um, um, another thing is the, of course, the Skywire and the band, you know, the bandwidth metering, it's going to be really big. Yeah, no, I, I, I see a bunch of things. It seems like you're trying to do so many things. Um, is it I see you guys are actually completing a lot of the things. It's just like, it seems like it'll never okay. end. <laughs> so, so each thing is separate. Like it's a group, like one group is doing the VPN. That'll be two to three people. One person, uh, one, two to three people doing the CX, two to three people doing this CX application, two to three people doing Obelisk, two to three, you know, so there's small project teams and each project team doesn't really have to interact too much with the other project teams, right? until everything's integrated, but they get their little piece working, they work on this, and then later it gets integrated into a whole system. So th this development model is basically like, how, you know, it's very similar to what Apple does or what Google does, you know, when you have a lot of very uh, simple services, it's better than taking 60 people and throwing them on one thing because they start stepping on each other's toes and there's a lot of politics and arguing and everyone has an opinion about everything. And, you know, if you try to build a cell phone, like Nokia cell phone by throwing 60 developers, it doesn't work. But if you take two developers and you say, these guys, these guys make iTunes and these two developers make FaceTime and these two developers make the settings tab and these two developers make this, you know, the sound tab and these two guys work on the icons, right? And you split it up like that, you can get a good result. So a lot of it too is we... It looks like we're doing a lot, but not really. It, it, a lot of it's just driven by the customers. So it's like, what, it, what do people need? They say, you need this. Okay, we put a team together. We start working on it. Two years later, we get a project, a product out, you know, and then, you know, it's pretty straightforward. All right. And the last two things I got to ask you are going to involve um, with the scam uh, or smear campaign. Did, did that have oh, yeah, anything to do with, um, yeah, subs? I was going to say subs or substratum. What what happened with that? Okay, so substratum was this ERC twenty token, and they were a copy of like t uh, uh, kink coin or sex coin or something. They copied and pasted sex coin ERC twenty token, uh, a smart contract. Okay. And they didn't even remove the comments, the sex coin comments from the smart contract. Okay. So they went on like they went on like Upwork or something and hired some guy ten dollars to copy and paste the sex coin, or red coin or kink coin or something, a skin coin, a smart contract, and they launched the token. But they didn't even change the names of the smart contract from like the kink coin. <laughs> so so Absolutely what was the serious. whole deal with it? And then they copied us and they said that they were doing a decentralized VPN or whatever. And then they raised a hundred million dollars or some shit, right? In some ICO, right? And what happened was people were realizing that this was a scam. And they were coming over and then they were learning about Skycoin. And a lot of people were talking about Skycoin in the substratum community. So they started banning their admin, this really angry guy, started banning all the people talking about Skycoin in their community. But and then they and they have you know other groups. So a lot of the substratum people started to come over to Skycoin, basically because they, because Skycoin is real. We're releasing software, and this this 
thing was a scam, basically. And basically, uh, they went and the, they, they got they're really angry uh, that they're losing people to Skycoin. So he did a massive FUD campaign. He hired this, and there were a lot of people involved in this, but we actually, we doxed one of them. It was this kid living in France. This kid was paid by Substratum and he had a botnet on Reddit and he was attacking us with this botnet. The botnet was doing over 600 or 800 shit posts per minute. So we had our admins sitting there trying to ban these bots that were flooding our channel. And we had 600 or 800 Reddit bots per minute coming in. No way. Which was ridiculous. And you're banning one a second or ban what you ban one a second. You're only banning six, 60 per minute or something. And uh, it took like a month to ban all this, this kid's bots. And he was flooding our cryptocurrency so hard that um, they actually, any post that had the word Skycoin was automatically banned. And they kept that policy in place for months until all these kids' bots, these Skycoin shit talking bots, were banned, because every it was just crazy. Like human we, human beings cannot keep up with 600 bot posts a minute or a second or some shit like that. Um, I was looking at we had a feed to start scraping Reddit. And we're seeing like boom, 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 like a machine gun of like shit posts just flooding down the 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 the, the channel as the we had a channel where it would take scrape Reddit and then post on this Telegram channel. And it was like boom, 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 like a machine. It was a freaking machine gun of spam that was coming out of this this thing. And he ended up running out of bots that he kept registering more Reddit accounts but they weren't two years old. And he only had like 10,000 something Reddit accounts that were aged over two years. Only? So we put like this policy. Yeah. Where you could, um, where your account had to be over like one year or something to old on Reddit to be able to use. And that stopped the flood. So this kid and we doxed him and he was this kid living at his parents in France, running the freaking botnets, like some 16 year old teeny bopper. And then he, he thought, and then um, he, he um, shut up and laughed as soon as we doxed him on Twitter. Then there was this other guy. There was a, an editor by NextWeb. And this guy ended up getting bribed to do a hit piece on IOTA. And he also got paid money to do a hit piece on Skycoin. He, he's the NextWeb editor that wrote the hit piece, the McAfee. Some, there's some ridiculous, stupid hit piece. I hope it doesn't show up in Google, but it was something retarded because McAfee, I met McAfee in Malta and he got like a, he went back home and got a Skycoin tattoo immediately. I, gave him a, I didn't pay him anything. I just gave him a Skyminer and he was like so excited. He got, he went out and he did some Coke or something and he got like a Sky, his McAfee got a Skycoin tattoo. Then the next, then the substratum guys bribed this next web editor to write this really saucy article. It said that Skycoin was a scam because McAfee got a Skycoin tattoo. And then we got, and people were like shit talking us for two years because they thought Skycoin was owned by McAfee or some shit or something. And, uh, and I don't know, it was, it was just, it was just crazy. I hate that article. And this guy, next web guy, he got paid also to do a hit piece on IOTA and IOTA also hired a private investigator and they were going to sue this guy. So he was getting threatened by the IOTA Foundation for basically getting, you know, because they found the guy who paid him, the intermediary who paid him money. And we also, we, we did, we had a, we infiltrated the Substratum admins channel, but we had a guy create a name that was like similar to one of the names of the admin and we infiltrated their channel. We got invited to their internal admin channel and we, uh, because one of the guys was like, wasn't getting, Substratum stopped paying their people. And then Substratum's mod team contacted us and they say, hey, do you want the blah, 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 blah. And because, and they were, because their mod team was pissed because they, they weren't getting paid by Substratum. So they, uh, one of our guys created a, a name uh, similar to one of the admins who just deleted his account. And then their mod team invited him into the channel. And then we downloaded a copy of the Substratum's chat logs. And in there, they were talking, you know, they all the shit about, they weren't even just flooding sky corners, a bunch of other stuff, but they, this was their, their channel where they, they said, admitted that they paid the, the next web guy money to write this hit piece. And they were laughing about it and making like dick jokes and like 
weird shit, weird shit. Like these guys are like drunk or on drugs and like there is a wild west in crypto man and people are trash sometimes um but this was yeah. also another thing oh. this was probably oh, 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 wait, but, wait, wait. but this next web guy right when iota was going to threaten to sue him he fled to tijuana mexico and so he's down in tijuana mexico like blowing coke and fucking hookers in tijuana and like in tijuana mexico because he was scared that the iota foundation was going to do a lawsuit against him <laughs> what in the world and the next web editors are all covering their ass and defending him and i said can you remove this article and they're like send us the evidence and i'm like i'm gonna sue you why am i gonna give you evidence in the lawsuit that i'm gonna sue you like you're slandering us why would i give you anything they do i'm gonna share my screen real quick uh let's see all right so share this do you, do you see this article right here oh man do you recognize this one Tristan Green dismantled a relatively, and this is fake too. They they photoshopped. I sent Christian Green like an email, and they he photoshopped the fucking email, and he put the he didn't photoshop the email. He took the text of the email and posted it on there. And I said this email was fake, and then he got called by the editors out that he's that the email I sent as a response was uh oh and they said this guy was fucking ceo of skycoin or coo and he was just some g a community member that did some event in san francisco without asking us and he was going on the stage telling everyone that he was coo and he was then you in, of skycoin it, it's like an elvis impersonator or some shit and then he was getting invited to the uh then he was trying to use say that his, he was a position CEO of this company or so, of Skycoin. Then he was using that to like ring in investors and try to promote some shitcoin ICO for this scammer kid in New York. Yeah, and, they, and they so mentioned this guy, that and then they link it up with like the Sky Miner saying they're selling Sky Miners for one BTC and I, I don't know. It, it was it's a thousand dollars. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously it's a FUD article, so it's like all kinds of garbage, but I was just wondering what you thought of that. They were paid. NextWeb was paid to publish this shit. So the this so these guys, it's really really just na really nasty. Then Substratum did a second ICO. They ran out of money. Yeah. And then they did a second ICO, and they tried. How, to how do you do a second coin. ICO? Okay, okay. This is how Substratum does it. You have your old coin, you create a new coin, and you try to raise money on your new coin but it's not convertible to the new coin. You tell the old people, old, old coin, sell the coin for Bitcoin and then buy the new ICO. So they <laughs> sell the substratum that you have and use it to buy the ICO for the new coin. After it's already been devalued, right? And in their new ICO, they had a smart contract that let them print up an infinite number of coins. So Binance delisted substratum and then they died and all the people quit after they got doxxed, after their admin team. So we doxed them, actually. Their admin team, after uh, we got in their channels, their admin team was fucking pissed because they weren't getting paid. We, they gave us all the, their admin team gave us all the information and we doxed them. And then all of the, like the top four people in Substratum quit. And uh, so, so we dealt with that. And there was one, oh man. Yeah, so all the fun, it's all fake. And there's still people that are butthurt. Like all the fun on Skycorn is bots. It's like one guy. Then we had an admin he was he made a lot of money and then he got drunk and he was doing like bitcoin poker or bitcoin um what do you what do you yeah bitcoin bingo while he was drunk and he lost all of his bitcoin oh, and he man. and he's then he started like blackmailing us and he had like drug addiction problem and then he threatened to kill um who's trump's brother like eric trump or something and then the secret service raided his house like three times and he had been <laughs> Like said, like ten people in this house. Sounds like John McAfee all over again. Yeah. So then, um, oh man. So we, we had one of our like after the Bitcoin price, we were in the altcoin winner, right? So a lot of people lost, and people don't remember this because Bitcoin's at sixty thousand now. But there was this period when Bitcoin was like dying, right? Like a year ago, two years ago, and the people were just like you know doing drugs, drinking. They were just killing themselves. And they were um, 
just really nasty i don't know and then just like going freaking crazy so we we yeah i i don't know that this is why i want to get in the corporate and just the business services and i i just want to I don't really, I really want to sort of divorce Skycoin from crypto and bring in most of the money outside the crypto and do social media or something legitimate because, you know, after what I went through the last 10 years, I feel like blockchain is sort of dirty. I feel like dirty just having to deal, you know, and the price goes up and all these scammers show off and, um, uh, you know, ridiculous, like there's a market maker and he says, I want to buy a hundred Bitcoin with a Skycoin. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then he's like, uh, and I'm like, okay. And then he says, uh, and, and then he says, uh, um, okay, uh, 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 you, you give me the million Bitcoin, uh, you give me the million Skycoin or whatever, right? And I'll keep the Bitcoin to use it for market making, right? So, 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 so the idea is like, um, he, I want to buy 100, 100 Bitcoin of Skycoin, but I won't give you the 100 Bitcoin. I'm going to keep it. Use it for market making. So I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna buy your car, right? But I'm not gonna give you any money. It I'm gonna keep the no money sense. to make the price of the car go up. So give it, me a million dollars. I want a million dollars for free. Uh, I know. I have, it's, it's like some people. Where do they get a brain? But the, I have six or eight people a week. Whenever the Bitcoin price starts going up, message me with this shit. And another scam is like we stopped OTC because they people would buy otc and they, they we, there's no discounts we don't do that but before they're like oh i'm gonna buy uh they would buy otc and then they want in the this I, we never did discounts but other coins do discounts like ripple they do a discount sale right the person buys a million dollars then they immediately dump the coins on the market to get their money back within five minutes and make 10 percent and, and seriously like they buy an otc with a discount that immediately sell on the market in five seconds in one fucking order on Binance to get, to get the money back. And like, what? Oh, it, it, yeah. There's so much arbitrage going on and they, they even have flash loans. Now you can do it with flash Aave. loans. Yeah. Have you ever flash heard of loan? them? <laughs> no, yeah, you, you can get a loan. You don't even have to pay it. Then you can arbitrage and basically you get an instant loan. And as long as you pay it off, you pocket the difference. It's crazy. Dude, yeah, that's how they're trading. hacking. Like um, two weeks ago, they uh, hacked. Uh, I, I can't even. I think it was like Cover or Alpha Finance for thirty something million or eighty something million or something. It was a flash on. It was hacked. It. it was like what in the world? So, who holds the um, the pre mined Sky Coins? Is that just in like so a smart contract or? No, there's a, it's locked. So it's, it's in a million coin tranches. And when we did this, this was almost 10 years ago, we did like a lot of multi-sig and it, it's actually a really complicated procedure. So whenever we have to unlock new coins, it takes like a week, like six days and you know, people different times. It's a pain in the ass. It's really, cause it's a really old system and we didn't have like time locks. And there, there was a mathematical way of doing a multi-sig transaction that only has a single public key. So on the blockchain, it doesn't look like a multi-sig transaction because you can actually multiply two public keys together with this like ECDH operation. Like um, I think a private key is an integer and a public key is a point on the elliptic curve raised to the power of the uh, um, private key. So if you, you can take a point on the curve, the public key, and you can raise it to the power of any integer so there, there's some way of actually um, doing a multi-sig transaction with a normal transaction. So it's multi-sig, but you can't tell it's multi-sig because it uses like this math trick. So we we did we locked the coins with that when we developed it. Anyway, so it's just um, like the coins are in tranches of 1 million coins. So they get locked, unlocked sequentially. And even five years ago, we were supposed to have distributed 25 million coins but we never did that. I don't even think we're at, I think we're at 20 million now. And uh, what happened basically is we found out we can't sell the coins in the market because the price would go down too much and it's pointless. The rewards that we're paying out, we can't pay out enough rewards because if you look at the total amount that's fair and you know decent profit on the mining and whatever, it's only this amount. If you look at how much we're spending on software, it's only this amount, it's tiny. 
And if you look at the value of those coins, even when the market cap of Skycoin is at 10 million, we have never hit our distribution target. We were supposed to distribute like 1 million coins a month until we hit 25 million. And then we were supposed to um, do 5 million coins per year after that. And five years later, we're only at 20 million now. And we haven't even hit the 25 million yet for that where the time lock process begins. So, um, you know, the reality of the distrib distribution of the coins is, is, is really a pain in the ass. It's, um, so I, is I it think so that, low because uh, people don't have the sky miners running or what? No, it's because um, it, pretend you had to distribute, pretend you have a, you know, hundred million dollar market cap, right? And you you have you have ten million coins, and you have to distribute another million coins. That's ten percent more coins, right? So that's ten million dollars. So what are you good? Are you going to pay people ten million dollars for making memes on Telegram? Are you going to pay people ten million dollars for running, you know, some server so that each every person makes eight hundred dollars a month for every Raspberry Pi, and then just dumps on the exchange and drives the price down? Are you going to spend $10 million on, you know, software development when you can only manage 30, you know, 30 software developers, you know? So the, the problem is the, the numbers just don't make sense. The, the, you know, for just, I think that if you distribute new coins, they should go to the community doing something useful. They should go to people developing software. They should go to people developing memes, people that, you know, um, uh, doing bug fixes, people, and, and, and what you find, you know, they should be contributing something useful that increases the coin price, right? But the reality is that $10 million is too much money. Even distributing $100,000 is pretty, yeah. it's hard It's it, to do it in a, you know, and if you did it unresponsibly, like you just do it like a drunken, throwing money around and going to strip clubs and buying Lamborghinis and, you know, oh, I need to rent a private jet. Oh, fifty thousand dollars. You know, if that's how you're distributing your coins, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna go, you know, broke. And ten million dollars is not a lot of money. But the way we did it is was pretty responsible and pretty conservative. And I don't, I don't think it was aggressive enough. And we didn't, we didn't do any of that. And we didn't have any like crazy costs. And you know, like Ethereum spends like twenty million dollars, you know, to rent like some corner at Davos throw a Davos party and you just, you know, you can, if you want to waste money, you can waste money. But we, we kept the, we kept everything pretty reasonable. And, uh, you know, that's why we've been able to run so many projects for so long. So how not, do you get like a predictable inflation? Like Ethereum, it's like two or 3% every year, you know what you're getting, you know, what's going to happen. But mm -hmm. with Skycoin, it's like, you, it should have been 25 a couple of years ago. And but we never, so, like... the, so there is a cap on the inflation. So when we get to 25 million coins, only 5 million new coins every year get released. Okay. I mean, the release schedule is over 20 years. It's going to take like 20 years after that, that five, 5 million uh, coins per year gets released. That's going to be um, take 20 years. Basically. I mean, at the rate you were going, you weren't even issuing five a year. You're issuing no, about no. three or two yeah so it's, it's so what's gonna happen so when we get to 25 uh if it was five that uh another five million is what is it 20 percent so the inflation would be max 20 percent per year yeah but we've it's been actually substantially lower than that it's been like less than 10 percent and if the and here's another problem when the coin price goes up the distribution gets cut because all of your costs are actually in u.s dollars so if the price goes from five one dollar to ten dollars, your distribution rate drops by ten times. That's true. So <laughs> it'll be interesting. So, so I, I I don't know. I, I don't I don't think the when you do mining and you just program at a fixed rate, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, it's, I, when the price is going up and it's going down and yo-yoing and your like community budget is going up from one, you know, $10,000 a month, a million dollars a month or whatever. And it's the same number of people in the community program. It's, you know, I, it's just crazy. I, I don't know. I really, I don't think there's a good, there's no way of doing it well either because no matter how you do it, people, you can complain. People can complain. 
and this person wants it done that way, and this person thinks it should be done that way, and this person thinks it's one of those issues where no matter how you do it, you can be, it's, there's always someone that's going to be able to complain about it. I, I don't think there's any like perfect. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's hard. Yeah, no, I, I get it. And uh, last, last, well, the question, the last two questions I want to ask you is, are you looking at any promising projects or do you like any other cryptocurrencies or are you just kind of heads down and work it away on Skycoin? Yeah, so I, I, I look every once in a while with the crypto space and I'm not really happy with what I'm seeing. I, I think that the economy is devastated. Food prices are going to go up, high inflation, wages aren't going to go up, debt defaults are going to start. China, all the factories are hit. Like there's a guy, he might own 800 houses and they're a million dollars each, right? And his factory is down 50%. In a Crimea River, he has half. Of, he has at least half a billion dollars of real estate. He has money offshore. But, you know, he's, he's not going to... His, since his factory is not doing well this year because of coronavirus, like Crimea River, he's still almost a billionaire, right? So you have some stuff like that, but you see these factories and they're not, they're not running. The exports aren't what they were two years ago. So I feel like the boom times are over. I feel like people are hoarding money, right? And so the economy is very weak. Even though Bitcoin is going up, it's crazy. I, I don't see a lot of excitement. I don't see people celebrating. I don't really see that we're in a... We're, I feel even with Bitcoin at 60,000 that we're still an altcoin winner. I think we have at least another two years until we go into the boom. Like, I don't think you could have a dot, you know, you could have a dot com boom in the middle of an economic depression or, or, you know, what we're going through. So I think people are going to hoard cash. They're going to hoard assets. They're not going to be spending. They're not going to, you know. So I, I, I think that. What I, what I see in crypto is I don't see a lot of technical innovation. I see a lot of pump and dumps, a lot of money raising. Uh, the companies that are doing really well with, uh, with software development, the market cap does not reflect them. The market only reflects marketing and, and Lambos and attracting traders and doing pump and dumps and gamblers. And, you know, that's really a lot of what, what it is. What, it's not a mature market. There's no one using these blockchain product so i still see blockchain is very early i think it's going to be like 10 or 20 years before we really see blockchain as a technology being used by businesses and you know integrated into everything um so i so i think it's early still it's not it's and we're still in the winter phase so i think another two three years so bitcoin could even be at 150,000, and i would say that it's still the winter phase of the market so, uh, because if you look, a lot of the money that people had to gamble on these financial assets and so on from their businesses and other, and, you know, stock market going up, all of it's been wiped out. So, you know, when we are in an economic boom time, all this money and credit and people can get loans and things like that, but the credit shut off, the businesses aren't doing well, people's incomes were cut off, um, you know, and we're heading into a new economic crisis. So I don't see, I don't see the, the, the the altcoins really in a bubble right now. So I think it's still a bear market uh, in terms of fundamentals and in terms of how people think. Anyway, when I look at crypto, sometimes I'll, I, it's a bubble. I think it's very isolated, like, you know, atomic, interoperable, smart, blah, 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 blahs, right? And, and, and I know personally, you know, as an insider in the industry, I know a company, they had a blockchain with $700 million market cap. And there were less than 12 people who downloaded their wallet. So you, that? you could have an asset. I, just to say. <laughs> uh, I can't say, but um, there, you know, there's people that, you know, I saw after launch, like they launched and they, I talked to the developers and they said there are 12 people download this many people download the wallet. And I said, how many people download it? I said, this is like 12 or something, but like six or eight of them were paid people that had to download the wallet for quality assurance testing. I, what do you do on a given day, man? You seem busy. Uh, so I, I stopped doing everything except code review. So I haven't, this is like the first interview I think I've done in a month or two months. Or I, I'm in time warp. I don't even remember. Um, things like two days ago, they're like I thought it was like a month or something. But um, so I just, I wake up and then for 16 hours, I've been closing tickets on GitHub and going and, and I open a file 
and I say, this is wrong. This isn't commented. Rename this. What does this do? Why did you delete? Why did you delete this? Who wrote this? These files are in the wrong folder. Why did you do that? Your import paths are wrong. Blah 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 blah. This this, this slows down. Blah 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 blah. The, the, I, I go in and I delete like thirty percent of the code in the first day of the thing. And there's like I, like fifteen thousand lines. And then when I'm done, there's like six or eight thousand lines because I've either deleted everything or reorganized it, moved it around, uh, you know, simplified it. So there's just a lot of crap when you have all these developers coming in. They come in, they do this, they do that, and I I cleared out like thirty thousand lines of code without breaking anything. And then I have twenty. There's if you look at um, let me see if I can screen share this. So that's Beeple, yeah. All right. So so this is one repo, right? Is this uh this is so weird. Okay. Yeah. So so this is so so this is a repo, right? Okay. This is for Skycoin GitHub uh dot com. Um ah! laptop screen number. Okay, github.com slash skycoin.cx, right? So in this in the Skycoin, you have a Skycoin organization, and within the Skycoin organization right here, you have like Skybian, which is the image for our these are our projects, right? And how many are there? So there's 80 repos in here. This isn't even all of them, right? This is just the Skycoin repo on GitHub, right? 80 repos. Skybian is our image for like the Skyminer, CX programming language. Uh, Skywire, user manuals, CXFX is a game library for, for Skycoin. DMessage is the centralized messaging protocol used by Skywire. CX Evolves is some, some AI stuff that we're testing with CX. CX Games, I just started 20 hours ago. Yeah, you CX can AI see that was a newer one, but yeah, you can see a lot of activity on them. CX AI Gym NES. This is an NES emulator, so the AI demo can play like Mario games. It's stupid. CX Games. Th this is interesting. This is like uh, in our programming language. This is two years old though, right now. But we had people um, CX Tetris, CX Sky Taxi, Sky Boom, Brick Breaker, Flappy Cats, Pac Man 3D, Pac Man 2D, and Snake. So these are like. Um, Let's see, hopefully the screenshot. So these are video games that people wrote in CX. So this isn't a smart contract. This is like, I have 3D Pac-Man and eventually it'll be able to be run on the blockchain. So I can have like poker matches or multiplayer games or- um, What's so the benefit look at, for running that on the blockchain though? Nothing, we're just doing it to show that we can. <laughs> because we can so like this is um this is uh like pac-man and cx so some guy wrote you know and uh and then um they made like a tetris and cx right and um just to test out the language this is like snake because i and i want to i just want to see like um yeah so they made 2d pac-man right so they're like okay let's make 3d pac-man Right, so here we got 3D Pac-Man, right? Make it in 3D, and uh, just to show off that we. What internet are you using right now? Are you using a SkyMiner? No, I'm just on the normal VP. I'm setting up the SkyMiner for the office, but I haven't. Um, where? Oh man, uh, the internet here, Skywire doesn't really work well. It works okay in China, but there's still parts of it that I need to be fixed a little bit. For the it's not ready for 99.99999 that's that's why i'm doing the code review after i'm done with cx i'm doing the code review on skywire to get the 99.99999 thing for the enterprise use and in china it's really it's you know nothing really works very well okay so but here we have hardware wallet go we have this main skycoin run right uh the skycoin core and um, then CX chains, BTC tools, hardware wallet daemon, Skycoin website, Skycoin Explorer services. This is a little exchange prototype teller, the CX website. Um, these should be pro, these are private repos. CX cats, hardware, you know, okay, whatever. So, um, so th these are all the projects, right? Uh, some of uh, the public ones and there's other stuff that's not on here yet because it's not ready for the public but uh so anyway, this is the cx right so i got 2000 
313 commits on this, right? And if I go here to insights, in uh, this is just crazy. So I look just last month, right? February 10th to March 20th, right? This is cr this is me here. I I did 78 commits, right? I did 93 pull requests. So there's the developers, they do a bunch of commits. They had 93 pull requests in one month. One month is 30 days. So I have three pull requests a day, which is like every eight, you know, eight hours or something. It's crazy. It's insane. Um, 137 issues closed. This is on um, this programming language. So one month, 137 issues were closed and the issues are up here. And then new issues, 34 issues. So 22 people working on this, just one repo. There's other, like the CX AI, the CX whatever, CX Evolve, CX NAS, that's different people. Just in this repo, in the last month, there's 22 people working on this, pushing 311 commits, which is 10 commits per day, and then three merge requests per day. And then like 1,271 files changed with 751,000 additions and 43,000 deletions. So, so it's, this, like it's, one of like, those, it's like one of those things though, uh, because like everyone is saying Ethereum is so slow, it's not good and all kinds of stuff, but they have the network effect. Everyone's built on them. Yeah. So do you have projects being built on Skycoin? Or we actually are partnered with universities and even at the state and national level where our programming language before the coronavirus, our, we were dealing with schools and our programming language was going to be taught like nationally in universities, maybe even a quarter million of students per year, every semester would be coming in doing programming language uh, courses and they can't use Ethereum, they can't use the Bitcoin, it's too complicated. So they want some like educational language to be able to teach children blockchain programming and do a blockchain programming course. And we're actually the only blockchain platform that can do that. And we had the academic publisher for Beijing come down and we wrote a book for them and they were going to publish the book as a, as a textbook for teaching blockchain programming in colleges. And so we're working on a new version of that text. And that could be, a, if we do that and we go down that, I don't really know how much time I want to spend on that because it's be okay. But if we did go down that route and we pushed it and we did get it at a national level, that would be a quarter million students every semester being trained on this thing but it's not ready for that yet I, i'm and then the coronavirus happened and all the schools shut down and all the stuff that we were doing basically shut down because the coronavirus and the schools are right. still not really so and if you look at you look at this is like right yeah, so this crazy. is so my day is i wake up and for 16 hours i'm just going through this so like this is like Break continue statement not working properly. Panic when initializing a struct array with array literal. Panic if variable declared after for loop and if loop. Uh, Redeclaration issue with variable from different scope blocks. CX runtime error when using negative I32 to initiate an F32 value, right? So these are all, these are compiler errors, right? So this is like a- um, I would just get annoying. I, have to... I think I would hate to wake up. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and you lose your hair, and your hair turns gray, and it's you want to kill everyone that you, you meet, and it's a, it's a, um, wrong s print f behavior on printing boolean value with uh, you know, percent <laughs> v. Dude, that's nuts. Yeah, Sense. Like well, close. hey, man, it, it looks like you got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, really interesting. And um, I appreciate you actually coming on the channel, mm -hmm. uh, talking about some stuff and cleared, clearing some stuff up. It definitely helps a bit. Um, yeah, I appreciate this. I'll be popping it up on mm -hmm. YouTube so people will be able to take a look. But yeah, um, any other, anything you want us to know? Uh, anything else? No. So, so, so yeah, so my day, I wake up, do this, and then uh, I'm going to do this for CX, then I'm going to do this for Skywire, and um, then we're going we're gonna to go, we're going to go for, from there. How do you feel the economy is? Do you feel people are excited because Bitcoin's up, or do you feel it's still like, it feels dead still? See. You can't say, you're done? As always, guys, we'll leave you guys with a wisdom one-liner, Proverbs chapter 27, verses 5.
Better is open rebuke than hidden love. We have already done this wisdom one-liner, but it needs to be heard again. When your parents or someone gets on to you and is saying, hey, you should do this, hey, you shouldn't do that, it's they're doing it out of love to make you better. If they didn't do anything about it and they just let you roll, well, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be well off at all. Take the discipline, take the encouragement, take the uh, critiquing, and make yourself better. Thanks for watching guys. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell notification. That way you guys can be ahead of the game every time we make a new video. All right guys, thanks for watching. And without you guys watching, I wouldn't keep doing these videos, but I'm hoping I'm helping you guys. If I am, smash that like button. Um, go ahead and get started with the triple threat. Go ahead and start with the Celsius account. Here's a referral link where you guys can earn $20 in BTC. Really awesome, set up a Celsius account, easy to use, and you get crazy interest rates on your Celsius account, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, you name it. The next one in the triple threat is a crypto.com account. Super easy to use, super easy to set up, really easy to buy and sell on it. I don't like how it doesn't have limit orders, but really easy to use. And here's another referral code for 25 bucks in CRO. Um, here's the referral link. A8GP, you guys can read it. But anyways, guys, a cool place to buy cryptocurrency on the go. Allows you to buy small altcoins, um, unlike Celsius. Celsius is more so like your bank account. And the third one, this one is a fun one, uh, Voyager. This one is more so where you can buy with limit orders. It doesn't have as many altcoins as crypto.com, but it's really easy to use, easy to set up. And yes, this one does come with a referral link as well, and you'll get $25 in BTC. Um, this is how you can do a limit order, super easy to use, and they don't charge any trading fees whatsoever. Here's the referral link. You can't copy and paste it, but you can look in the description to copy and paste, and you can put that in and set one up. 25 bucks, free BTC. This is the funnest one though, Lolly, free. There is a referral link to this one too. I've actually won 100,000 sats one time on one of the uh, taps, which is worth like 100 bucks in Bitcoin. So it's crazy. Um, look, and there's even proof in the wallet. Look at that, daily stack, 101. Guys, set one up, it's really easy to do. Download a Lolly account and just set it up.